YouTube. It's Brian Phillips. It's been a while. <laughs> Has it? So we're just gonna open this dinky little box right here. Oh yeah! Oh, it's so huge! This Man. thing is gigantic. I almost thought it was an e-bike. It's not an e-bike. And if it was, I would not be lifting it like that. <laughs> so guys, this is a long awaited, much awaited F7F. I usually don't say that in the video because you guys already know from the thumbnail. I pretend like it's some big surprise, like we can't read English. Now you're gonna have to interrupt yourself, but you already said it. I know, I'm just like really excited for this one because it's been a long time coming. Oh yeah, look at that. It's the F7F Tiger Cat 1700 millimeters. Oh man. Yeah, it's big. Huge. Well, fit perfectly. Huge, huge. Fit perfectly in the living room next to the TV. <laughs> next to the other two meter plane and others. <laughs> and yeah. So just to give you an idea of 1700 millimeters, that's 1800 millimeters, mm -hmm. that pit. But the thing is you have to remember this thing has twin nacelles, big engines, all sorts of details, beautiful retracts. It's, it's just in a different echelon of plane, okay? Now that doesn't mean that the 1800 millimeter Ranger is bad, but I can just tell you by the weight of this box, it is huge. I have to literally separate the box from the box <laughs> because this is like, literally, you could, if you were small, you could use it as a coffin, it's so big. Yeah, our kids have already tried to dibs that box. Oh, really? Because it's gigantic. Okay. So there you have it, guys. She's huge, she's beautiful. Oh my goodness, there's different liveries. Oh, you know what that means. <laughs> Yeah. I hope they're not wet decals, but if they are, they'll look better. Oh yeah, four decal set options available. Oh. Blue color scheme only, there's another color. Is there a silver? Blue color What's the other color? Only. Twin is... 60 amp power system, strong, durable EPO. Realistic retracts and flaps installed. Now, admittedly, let's show them the four different. Oh, we've got Rich, Rich on there. Hey Rich, how you doing? Okay. So here it is, the big boss man, oh, the I king know which of the one cats. We have to do the kitty kitty and the bad kitty. Well, which one? We have BP. to do that one because it says BP. BP. I know, but it's like the lamest looking. That I don't even like the BP. It is definitely BP RC though, but I like the way these look better. Well, that's we don't have to do that. Well, we could do BP, but I just nah. I don't want to just sell it short because I well, like. Let's I see what they like actually the way look this like. One looks. But then that's, that's a bad kitty. That's a bad kitty, kitty kitty. So it's got a chick, man. And then this is like a tiger. And then that's like, I don't know. It looks like a cat in a, uh, some sort of like a tux. That says Marines, which is pretty cool. I kind of like the way that one says Marines better. Maybe we could do this and then also do BP. Well, let's look at them when we actually- We'll have to see. So anyway, decal options make me nervous. <laughs> And there's also that, you see that thing going from the antenna back to the yeah, tail? Yeah, is this a, is that a it's thing? It's a string probably, oh. I have to assume. So I don't know how that's gonna work, but we'll show you the back of the box here. Uh, we're upside down, sorry guys. That happens sometimes. This is gonna suck to flip over. Hopefully I don't like cut it down and timber. You guys see those lights when we designed this house? We designed those lights to be able to negotiate out of the way for gigantic packages like this. Oh look, there's we the BP one. Never move them. Yeah, see, I'm not crazy about the way that looks compared to the others. It definitely, it's got the cat though. Yeah, right, we'll see. Oh, the canopy is gonna be so gorgeous in this, I bet. Okay, so there it is, guys, look at that. Amazing. Overview, I'm not gonna read the overview, but let's look at the specs. Okay, so powerful twin 440 kV motors with twin Predator 60 amp ESCs with 10 amp U UBEX are huge, huge. Now I'm assuming there's a 10 amp UBEC, which means uninterruptible battery eliminator circuit. I think U is uninterruptible. I might be wrong. If I am, let me know guys in the comments below. The most accurately modeled landing gear set we have ever created. AKA it's expensive, so don't break it, That's Ryan. Of Wingspan, place. 1700 millimeters. Overall length, yes. Flying weight, wow, 5200 grams. That's big, huge. Motor size, brushless. 4250s, so that's 42 millimeters by 50 millimeters and 440, and there's two of them, okay? So yes, 
I, I can't tell if that means each of them have a 10 amp U back. That'd be kind of cool if you did, because you could do redundant, but you have to tie your grounds together so you don't have some weird floating ground. The radio required a six channel because this does have a reflex. This requires a 5,000, 2200 45C. This is one of those times where, okay, 14, eight, three bladed prop. I don't know if they're counter rotating. That'd be awesome if they are. Okay, so we have 50C packs here and these are our hundreds, but we have used and abused these. So let's go ahead and use and abuse them a little bit longer. By the way, if you guys don't see our chargers too often, we show them in almost every video. I always take my lanyard off for the radio setup part of the video. This is one of the reasons why I love smart packs because I can just stick it in and forget about it. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. By the way, if you ever pick up a smart battery and it's hot on this spot, that's normal because it's going through an auto discharge process. And in order to discharge itself, it needs to have a way to sink the heat. And that's how it consumes the juice that's stored. Okay. So those are starting. We're going to let them go. Those are both 50 C packs. Now, C rating, as you guys already know, unless you're new to this hobby, are basically BS anyway in most occasions. But the truth is a 50 C pack is generally going to be the better batch, the better of the batch run, okay? Mm. Compared to a 30 C. Now they also do some thicker separator panels inside of the batteries. If you've ever taken a battery apart, which I don't necessarily recommend unless you're totally doing it in a safe way. And the only reason I say that is because we have a channel and some idiot's gonna burn his house down if I say something else, okay? And then I'll get sued. So, so don't, don't do that. that. But the truth is, if you ever have an opportunity to safely take apart a battery, it'd be a good idea to do it safely. And if you don't know how to do that safely, just don't do it. But those LiPos have cells inside and there's separation panels inside. And the separation is thicker on higher C packs. And there's also larger leads for the main discharge lead. That's the basic principal difference. I haven't seen a whole lot more, okay? This is such a huge box. I'm probably gonna have to open both ends and push it out like a giant turd, like a giant foam turd. You guys, here on Brian Phillips, we, we stay away from crudity. We just go straight to the crudest. Can you hold the bottom? Hey, don't break my box. Don't break it. I didn't. Oh yeah, that looks really nice. Oh, I see. Okay, so a couple things that I just noticed. Did you notice what I noticed? Because I noticed it. Yes. They're not wet decals, I don't think. Okay, now we just did wet Where? decals. I didn't Show know them that. Over, over your shoulder. The wet decals took us forever. Oh, oh no, they forever. are wet decals. Dang. That means this thing's going to take forever longer. Okay, but I, what I noticed was. What? Oh, the control linkages? <sighs> Well, that's, that's like a 15 minute part of the build. Yeah, I know okay. the decals are. The decals are gonna be like where, hours. Where, oh, here's the decals. How do you know they're wet? Cause they're on this like. Look at this, it's so huge. We almost need to get a bigger oven wall. We should get it. a bigger stove just for do that Do you guys box. like how we put this flammable box on top of our flammable creation device? That's what we do here. Creation that, device. well, it's a gas fireplace. Sorry to offend some, cause some people get easily offended anymore. Um, okay, so wow, this is huge. That fuse is gigantic. And this is, this is a short fuse. Uh, just like the P38, it's got the nacelle for a fuselage. And then it's got a nacelle for an engine and a cell for the other engine. Oh, they folded my manual. How dare they? This side. They make it look so small there. It has to fit on the page. Reflex paperwork. Okay. okay. Somewhere there is the props. I thought it was the other thing. You know, the thing. <gasps> Reverse, forward, awesome. Oh good, we get to put stickers on those too. No, that's awesome. You know why that's awesome? Because that means we have counter rotational. It's gonna look so good. I can't wait. Now we have to figure out which way is which, which means we have to consult the manual, which will then forget to tell us. Okay. It is funny, because whenever we have like a genuine Actually, question, we something. pretty much can't get the answer. Ooh, that looks like a nice cone. It's kind of small for my taste, but uh, anyway, so why look, is it there's a vent. Green on the inside. Green? Um, because that's the color that they they did the plastic and then they painted it. Now I like that because green was a common color for the inside of the gear house, like inside of the gear boxes. I don't I, oh. I don't know why they do that. Maybe it's just because the paint was cheap during war times. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love look at the those dark panel blue. lines. Yeah. That is so good. And you know what's nice about dark blue color? Is this gonna pop in a bright, sunny sky? Yep. 
You know what's bad about bark, dark blue? It's going to disappear behind trees. But when, it's, when it gets to be in like October, November, December, January, when we're out flying at minus 10 below. And that's why it's so nice to look out and see all the corn that's still <laughs> just that drying back. That oh, it's going to be so nice. Okay, so you were correct, camera crew, by the way. These are definitely... Of course I was. As usual, you are right. You see what I'm doing? I'm just pulling these back. These things always get in the way of telling where brown is down. Brown is down. It seems to be kind of a catch phrase here on Brian Phillips. Right, see, brown is down. Make a t-shirt. That's right. That's right. And uh, yeah, a t-shirt with all the catchphrases from Brian Phillips RC. Laminarity. Scott, Laminarity. Scott will make you a sticker. He'll make me a sticker. Um, hey, have we even talked about that thing that we need to talk about? Or have we, we talked about it? Well, by the time this releases, oh, we yeah. can talk about oh, it. Oh yeah, it's gonna be, we'll already be there and back. So guys, well, if you didn't not. already know, we, we made an announcement video and we're not even sure if you've seen it yet. You probably but, have. But if you've seen the announcement video, you already know. So this is like old news. So, okay, so we got this little... I always miss this. I'm trying to throw that in stairway. No, Never make it, it in the stairway. It to the cat litter. The cat litter? Well, that's where it belongs. <laughs> Phone blocking. You guys are like, open the box, Brian. I'm waiting forever. You interrupted yourself again. Oh, so, yeah. So we're doing this thing. We're going to Bigfoot. So it's going to be super fun in Alabama. So we're going to see you in Alabama. If you guys don't know where Alabama is, it's in the south. Mm -hmm. So you should go there south and of, visit with us. Here. You can see us at the event. It was really fun. We went to Joan All this year. It's the first time we did events. Okay. Oh, there's the back. The U back. Mm. Amazing. Oh, you know what else is awesome about that? So awesome. They gave us a big cable to plug our battery in. And guess what comes off of that? Two small ones so that we can plug in the ESCs, which is gonna be super nice. Because that means when I have to hook up the doohickey for the voltage, I can stick it right where it needs to be. Hmm. It's gonna be fun. Okay, so we're going to Bigfoot. So we're going to Bigfoot. Do you guys know what Bigfoot is? In October. In October. So Bigfoot is, what's the date range? Camera crew I and consultant. I believe it's October 19th through the 22nd. That's a Friday where there's gonna be are we allowed to talk about what's going to be there? I think we can talk about it. Yes. So there's going to totally, totally be a literal flyover from literal warbirds. We don't know which warbirds, but it's going to be awesome. Unless, of course, like something more important than comes an RC event comes up, like, you know, some sort of a war event or whatever. They get scrambled to go, you know, drop some nuclear bombs or something like that. Then they probably will cancel probably. at the last second. Rudely. And so anyway, if you want to go, you can see us. We'll probably be flying at least in the STEM tent for part of it because that's part of the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to come out there and you can fly with Brian Phillips, uh, the class Z celebrity that you've always wanted to meet. I guess. Um, or if you really don't want to meet me, then don't go to the STEM tent <laughs> on well, Friday. <laughs> since we, yeah, avoid the STEM tent. So if you, we'll put a link in this video since we're talking about it, but it's we are. Birmingham RC. Birmingham. Is the, yep. So they're, you can they're the event. That's where the event coordinators. is. Coordinators. And you've probably seen their footage online before because they have pretty big presence on YouTube. Uh, not quite as big as ours, obviously. Right. <laughs> uh, wow. Oh, they're not wet decals. Woohoo! That is awesome. Maybe we should just save the BP and we can like put it on our yeah, car or put something. It on our car. Yeah, Maybe I mean, because that. that way people will know when I cut them off or speed right. past them and That's honk viciously. Totally what we need. Yeah. That is a lot of decals. Oh, they oh, have wait, wet decals. You're pulling. Oh, crappers. Why is that stuck down? I'm not sure. Oh, it's because it got flipped Stars over. Stars and bars is already stuck down. Okay. Thank you for catching that, camera crew. And there's a, the canopy. Oh, boy. Somebody at the factory is getting. Wait, is it already installed? Yeah, they probably already put it on. Okay, so I was fearful that it was on there. Oh, it's just this that's wet. And that makes sense because this is a high detailed. Oh, cool. Okay. That makes sense then. Oh, that one wasn't on there. These are all cool. I don't know which one you want. I don't know. Well, we'll have to look at the examples again. We'll look at the examples again. Oh. Uh, they always include this. I don't know if that's because it dries like in transit or something, or if that's, I think you're supposed to use this 
to like transfer them on there and then you can transfer them on to, and I'm like, whatever. That's like yeah. so much work. Just transfer it straight off of the paper. I just cut them out and stick whatever I'm gonna stick where I'm gonna stick it. I am gonna curl this because it's kind of like frustrating to try to keep it straight. Okay, that's awesome. That's big good news for okay. us. Yeah, cool. I'm like super thrilled about that. The only thing I'm not thrilled about is we probably are gonna lose this one. That Stars and Bars just has a little, Schmuck I might be able to take some chemicals and fix that. I could well, probably do a little alcohol on the edge. That might determine which one we use, just so we don't have to use that one. Well, ah. I don't want to make that decision because of that. But truth, truth, it may already be the one we want anyway. Okay, so we're continuing with our unbox. So I'm super excited so far. We have not been let down. The manual folded, it was only folded on one corner, okay? We haven't been let down yet. We've only taken out That's right. four pieces. And so we keep talking about Bama and we've got this amazing product here. Look at this. That's only good. This can be here and gone. Holy cow. That is huge. Look at that. Show them the size of my hole. It's like a thick rod there. It is thick rod. And there's lots of dust on it, so I should probably not like don't clean that off that all over with you. my hand. Um, okay, so by the way, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, uh, carbon fiber, you know, you don't want to like get it in your skin because it's kind of like touching insulation. And I don't understand. I've seen some guys put insulation in, and they're just like rolling up in it and touching it. And if I like look at insulation from a mile away, like I break out, it's well, crazy. I don't understand how some humans can do this and like some humans can't. Allergic to things. Things. I'm allergic to deadly things. Like grass. Grass is, yeah, that's true. I have kind of upped my dose of allergy medication since we did our hay, which by the way, we did get our hay done and we did work with the Indians again. And <laughs> I could see how that could be misconstrued. <laughs> The Indians in India yeah. that sold us the equipment. That we worked with the engineers because we had some problems and I had to do some welding and it was beautiful. It looks super professional. <laughs> but it did get the job done. I had to add eight millimeters to the inside of a spot. And so I used some washers. It was awesome. You guys would love to watch it. But of course I didn't waste my time filming it. This is huge and awesome. Here's the Predator ESD right there. By the way, I see a yellow, oh, those are yellow for servos. This is where the nacelle wires are gonna plug in. You're gonna have to point the camera at that angle if you want them to see what I'm talking about. Here's the light, oh yeah, see it? Okay, so, oh guys, don't, don't plug in this wing. You may cut your fingers. <laughs> There's like not even a prop on it. That's hilarious. I don't even know where to pick this up from. I'm trying to do it in a way that's not damaging. Ugh. Are you guys also as dainty with your models as I am? That is so light because there's no motor on it yet. Oh, yes, LEDs. I knew there was going to be LEDs on this. I mean, I kind of already knew that. But the truth is, look at that inlet. It's so gorgeous. Gorgeous. I love all these panel lines. I know. That's like, crazy. feel them. Wait, feel hold them. still. If, if, I was, if I was blind. I'm trying to see them in the sun. Yeah. Which some have claimed because I've hit trees and things. <laughs> that you're blind? You well, used to be. I actually was blind most of my life. Um, not quite legally, but still. Close enough. Oh, quick release. What's this? Throt. Throttle. Throttle. Okay. Should I just like trip slip into the scissors? Oh, ah. Uh. Oh, I tripped oh, into the scissors and oh my goodness, wow, whoa, that's crazy. I fell right into the safety warning. Oh, dang it, it's gone. I guess we'll have to throw that away. Um, this wing is awesome, guys. It feels super stout. It's got lots of strength. I can just tell from holding it. It doesn't give at all. There's two servos, uh, three servos, excuse me. So these are the flaps. I believe the flaps are together. And then of course the aileron. I love when I see a plane that is well done and ready to rock and roll. And I don't have to like reinvent the wheel to make it work. Because the, the thing is like for me, and this is not necessarily speaking for anybody else, but in our particular situation, I love a plane that I don't have to redesign, okay? It makes me feel good. It, it, and yes, they do cost more. Admittedly, this is an expensive plane as it should be because it's big, it's got a lot of components. And there's a lot of engineering that goes into these planes. 
And so the more engineering and the more components that are included in a plane, of course, that's gonna drive the price up because there's just more stuff there, okay? Raw materials wise, and in terms of inventory size, shipping cost, all that stuff adds up, and the next thing you know, you get a pretty expensive plane. But the truth is, when it's an expensive plane and it goes together awesome, it makes me smile, okay? Because I, I enjoy building a plane when it's not like a huge pain in the butt. And to be honest, we've built planes for FMS that are huge pains in the butt, but they're usually manageable, okay? Yeah. FMS does a pretty good job. That F-18 was kind of a huge pain in the butt for two reasons. One, all the decals were wet, which look really nice, except that you've got these little release bumps and you've seen them a million times if you work on planes, these little bumps like this. There's less on models today than there were, but it made it extremely difficult to do the decals. And then you end up with things like this where you can't quite fit them and then they rip because those things are weaker than your heavier vinyl or plastic, some plastic sticker type, type sticker, sticker okay? Yeah. Like these stickers, these are kind of like a vinyl based sticker is what I would call them. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna stretch out and they're gonna cover up and they're gonna deal with these bumps better than the wet ones. The wet ones, they like to lift and then you get really poor purchase onto the substrate, okay? And um, especially on this particular plane, because this, this little bump here, where the top half and the bottom half were glued together at the Chinese factory, okay? Mm -hmm. They didn't trim it very well. That's why I love pulling these things out and just seeing these details. So when I get all excited about it, it's not just because I'm a nerd or I'm trying to sell something. I am trying to sell something. And you are a nerd. And I am a nerd. So but. whatever, get over it, I guess. <laughs> but the, the truth is, it, speaking of selling things, guys, okay, so the FCC, the FTC, the FTC, FTC. the Federal Trade Commission, need you to be aware that there is a possibility I might make a dollar if you buy something. Or not a dollar, I should say an amount. Right. So if, if that was ever unclear, I don't know how it would be unclear. We literally say it like every video. For thousands of videos. But if you missed it. If you missed it for the thousands of times we said, we work with these manufacturers and we do make some money when you buy one from our link. So please do that because like, would you rather me not make money for doing all this work? Because that's terrible. <laughs> the truth is we love the work, and, um, but it, it, it is a lot of work, okay? I'm, gonna have to I'm not gonna drop stuff it. On the There's table. plenty of weight, plenty of weight there. This wing looks every bit as good. So getting back to the point, guys, we're going to Birmingham, and we hope <laughs> that you will meet us there. And uh, we, we went to Joan All, and we went to RC Fast, mm -hmm. Nut sack, bolt Ooh, sack. That's not too bad. Yeah. Seriously, like, look, this is, this is the hardware pack, Dancing Wings, <laughs> for this huge, complicated thing. That was kind of an unfair shot at Dancing Wings. Dancing Wings makes a good product, okay? They're just It's not... just like, oh my goodness. I think I had a bag that big for that, like, little fake mini cub that actually was not that great anyway. Yeah. They're, Dancing Wings is just not our stage of life right now. Well, there's going to be a stage of life. You just wait until we're old and our kids have moved on and you're like, hey, I need something to do. <laughs> That'll never happen. See you later. Me. I'm going to go shopping. It's you can me. build a plane. We're going to be, sir, we're building another pond. <laughs> we got another runway we're putting in over here. By the helipad. Yeah. Kids, get out of the way. There's an, F, there's an airliner landing. <laughs> when did I get the accent? Okay. So here it is. That's gonna nice. be cool, it's a drop tank. Now, one thing I do like about this plane is it's so vastly gigantic that there's only one drop tank. F-18, perfect example, love the F-18, love flying it. It took us five flights to get it flying good. And it was in some wind, okay? Mm -hmm. So admittedly, but I'll, I'm gonna tell you something. When you do jets, there's just something that's hard to explain to somebody that hasn't flown these planes. Like, first of all, if you haven't flown planes, you don't have an appreciation for how hard it really is. And uh, so when you see somebody like, like Rich B Baker, who, who flies the RC Informer, been doing this forever. I have mucho respect for his skills. Uh, definitely different, um, different modus operandus. Did I say that? I don't think so. Oh, I said okay. that totally wrong. The, uh, the modus operandi, I don't know. I can never say that right. So he basically does things different than we do. But the thing is, That's really cool. he's a really good pilot. And he also flies real planes too, which is kind of cool. Now this also has a retract in it. So like this is the money maker. Oh. I love this thing, it's so cute. Look at my 
Look at my child. Look, oh, it's so cute, it's so small. And there's the landing gear doors. I don't want to pull those open because I might damage something. And this is where the warning label needs to be. Watch out, this thing might stab you. Okay. We're need like three plane stands for this plane. <laughs> no know? kidding. <laughs> so anyway, um, when you see somebody fly and they do a good job and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, whatever, dude, I could do that in my sleep. I've played Nintendo 64 once. <laughs> or PlayStation 7, whatever we're up to these days. These days, all you youngsters. So if you see somebody flying, you're like, hey, that, it's, it's hard. It's actually hard to do it. And the thing is, the skills needed to fly um, are stacking skills. Knife. Where did I put the knife? Right there. There goes a neighbor with a baler that works. <laughs> Must be nice. Ah, <laughs> oh, look, another rod. One rod wasn't enough. It's pretty small. It's small, but it's thick. No, seriously, the, the walls are thick. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Is that annoying? Hold them still if you want the people to see. See? Mm -hmm. Okay. This one's longer and thicker. <laughs> I'm just gonna pull this. Oh, it's like twins. It's so beautiful. Oh, do you want to meet it? <laughs> oh, it's so short. It's cute. Okay, so channel five. It's ambiguous. Channel five, whatever that is. Channel 5, ooh, Channel 5B. Oh, good. Yeah, so they're probably talking about gear there. Ooh, why, why? Don't, don't confuse me. Don't confuse me with long wires that go to nothing. What the heck? What the hey? See this? Oh, it's tangled. We're doing cable management when I'm holding my baby. This is very dangerous. Kids don't do this at home. It's dangerous. We're professionals. Or something like that. Oh, what? it's just, it's stuck, oh. it's stuck. There's a little glue, a little, little extra stickiness, okay? That's a long wire. Well, it's, one's longer than the other. Okay, so guys, just to be clear, this is gonna be 5C, this is 5B, okay? So one is gonna be like the door, and one is going to be the gear retract, okay? So we'll be able to make that, oh, that's so gorgeous. Look at the motor, simulated it motor. Looks the same as the other one. Does it really? It does. What? Okay. There's foam in it though. I cleaned it out. And now you have foam on your face. You have a problem with that? <laughs> Can't you just love me the way I am? <laughs> oh, geez. Should I like have waffles or something before you did that? <laughs> All over you. All right, so anyway, what I was getting back, back to is when you see somebody fly a plane and you think, hey, I could do that in my sleep. Well, you probably could if you're one of those kids that was flying it and all. Yeah. And uh, RC Fest, I'm talking about the kid from Germany that's like 12 and he's like a million times a better pilot like than I'll ever 14. be. He's 14. No, he's 14. But he's he like started, 15. he's like, you started when I was four. I'm like, how did you start flying when you were four? They would put you in jail around here. Except they probably wouldn't and they shouldn't and that's the stupidest thing ever. But there is some truth to it. Flying airplanes, jail time. Jeez. Paying taxes, jail time. I hope you guys get that I reference. hope somebody's counting how many accents you have in this video. <laughs> Just a few of them. It'd be like an, an adult beverage game. So listen, that, that is a huge, huge fuselage. The foam to pr protect the foam gets stuffed into the foam. Mm, right you, there. You don't have to do that at your house. You can just you throw can, it away. You can just throw like it away. A person. Yeah, I mean, we have to recycle here, you know? So we're trying to save the planet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not so much, but that's okay. We'll save that for another day. We don't want to offend anybody. Oh my goodness, and it's so gorgeous. Oh, it's so skinny. <laughs> it's awesome. Looks like a fish. It does. Like a huge fish. Look, it's this big. <laughs> hmm. Oh, please be careful. That is awesome. That is gigantic. How are we going to get through doors? <sighs> That looks so sweet though, the panel lines. I am super excited for this. So nice, baby. Those are big, big dimples though. Like they're- What, the, they're all huge. the rivets? Yeah, the rivets are awesome. Okay, now let's see how the canopy opens up. Um, there's an antenna spot. Oh, good, we have one of these. Mm. Okay, there it goes. I'm gonna show you the, uh, the canopy's kind of lackluster, but that's okay. That's okay, they got the right type of pilot. 
The green is cool, but yeah, not a lot of detail. Big plastic reinforced wing joiner area. That is. And then it looks pretty much ready to go. I mean, this is going to be a simple setup, actually. This is not going to be a bad build. It's going to be simple. <laughs> no, it seriously is. Like, I can tell just from... Time. Okay, look, I just want to point this out. <laughs> FMS, you did a good job on this hatch. Look, watch this hatch. Boop. Oh, yeah. Boop. Okay. Now, I just want to juxtapose that real quick. I'm just going to lay you right here. I'm just going to juxtapose that to... Is that safe? Yeah. Okay. Totally safe. Just nervous. Watch this. Not so good, not so good. Pull up, the little tiny piercing thing. And then, whoop! And then look, there's like, if you try to push this down, watch what happens. Uh, nothing, okay? And then you have to push it down. Now, mind you, we've done that like 17 times already, yeah. okay? So there's been some advancements. Now that is a super, super small detail, small in the grand scheme of an airplane, okay? So I'm not trying to beat up on that. It is a smaller plane by a significant amount. But the truth is, that's the type of stuff that we're talking about that you're not gonna see when you go and look at some other brand, okay? Because those companies don't work with us and there's probably a good reason for it. They're afraid we're gonna show you those type of details, okay? And truth is, we try to show a lot of details that the other guys don't show. And it's not because there's like some magical solution like I must know every detail of a plane before I purchase one. No, but a lot of you guys are like, man, that's a lot of cash to drop on one plane. But uh, I gotta say, this thing is fantastic looking. Where, where is that gonna live? I've got some ideas. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. There's an inlet in there. Ha, ha. Oh, so that would make sense why there's... Oh, that is so gorgeous. And they even had the presence of mind to use green. Do we have to glue that on? Yeah, probably. I have some China glue from China. You do? Yeah. Are you wow. kidding me? I can't believe that. Yeah, it's weird. Okay, so we're going to take a second because, like, literally, I got to get this Nowhere thing out of down. the way. But I'm just saying, those are the types of details that we bring to you on Brian Phillips RC. And the other guys might show it but they're not gonna show it going together. Even the Petronik brothers, they're going to Petronik brothers. I'm, sure I'm sorry guys, that, if you're watching this, I don't know why you're watching this. You've already done this plane, I'm sure. But the thing is, they're gonna show you an unbox and they're gonna, you know, is it vacillate? Is that the word I'm looking for? I don't know what you're talking about. They're gonna basically say how amazing it is. That's not vacillating. What is the word I'm looking for? I don't know. It's kind of like that. Well, anyway, I can't think of the word, but anyway, they're gonna look at it and say, it's so sexy and so beautiful. I need to go eat some sausages and it'll be great. But the thing is they don't build it for you. We build it for you, okay? So eat it, the sausages. <laughs> Brothers. So we're gonna put this stuff away and then we're gonna come back and finish this build and we're gonna do it together. Now, a couple things I wanna talk about before I lay this beauty down and that is we have given mucho discussion in our brains on how we want to handle our receiver, okay? So our thoughts are, first of all, I doubt we're gonna have thrust reverse because I can already see the wires that come from the Predator ESC is definitely just three wires, okay? Now, that's okay because honestly, it is what it is at this point. See, throttle, mm -hmm. there's three wires. Now, I had somebody just in the comments the other day regarding the 15th anniversary Viper say, that theirs has thrust reverse. Ours did not, okay? So when we share what we share, we share what our real experience was. We don't like say, oh, well, yours will have it. No, I, I don't know. We have no reason to believe that yours will have it on that because our Predator ESC did not have the line. And he was like, no, you gotta dig up in there and Hobby View did this and all this stuff. And I'm like, that's fine if Hobby View did that. But the thing is, ours didn't have it. So we show it the way we get it, okay? So manufacturers, if you're listening to that, if you want us to show thrust reverse, you better have thrust reverse installed. Now, if you decide to add thrust reverse on this, you can add it, but it's gonna be complicated because here's the, here's the trick. You're gonna have two avian ESCs and I do not know how they play together when there's two of them, okay? Now, what we can do with this and what I want to do with this, if possible, and we have to do some testing and playing around, we've done it before, we should be able to do it on this plane, is is not thrust reverse, but differential thrust. I don't even know if differential thrust is helpful on this plane, but it's gonna look sweet. And so that's why we're gonna do it. And for that reason, we need some extra channels, okay? 
So when we come back and we get our plane stand out, we will talk about that in more detail. Are you afraid of- hit the- That? I wasn't gonna hit it. I was being super careful. I looked. You did not. I've never hit that thing ever walking a plane out the front door to film, ever. Never, ever. So note to self, guys, if you're building a house, (laughs) okay, and your wife wants some like giant glowing balls all over the place. Let her. If she lets you have these planes in the living room. Yeah, her. you better let her pick the light fixture she wants. So anyway, but just remember, <laughs> if you're whacking into the balls all the time, it can get very uncomfortable for your plane. All right, we'll be back in a second. Okay, so we cleaned up a little bit and we did make a decision. We're gonna do the Miss Kitty decals. Right, or the, the here, kitty, kitty. here kitty kitty. Yep. Okay, so I think we need to fold this. Okay. So that, it's nice, because we actually have help here, yep. which is nice. Now, two things that that means. A, we're not gonna finish, we're gonna talk about radio, so don't worry, guys. We need to get the nose cone installed now, and we need to get Miss Kitty installed, and then we're gonna come back to the radio setup stuff, because the thing is, she needs to dry so that she doesn't blow right off. Okay? True. Now, also, there is, this one's not listed in the choices, but it's another cool artwork, okay? So we're gonna cut this out, and we're gonna put this on the plane, okay? Now there's a bunch of other choices, as you can see, and they're all really good, and this, these are definitely water decals. Okay, so the water decals take time to dry. That's why we're starting with water decals right after we glue the nose on, okay? So we're gonna start with the glue so that the China glue can dry. China glue is, if you're ordering this plane from FMS, uh, then I would suggest that you order at least a couple of these tubes. When you're ordering, it's a good idea. It it goes for a long, long, long ways. And if you're ordering it from Horizon, because they also market these things, um, and we have links to both, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, or when you're ordering your receiver. We don't really care which one you get, but the thing is, uh, to stay true, to what we do here on this channel. We've got two different sizes. This one's smaller, this one's bigger. This one costs two and a half, three times as much as this, okay? So this is actually the best value, but you also, you don't get those pesky warning labels that tell right. you all the deadly characteristics of this stuff, okay? So the stuff's made in UK, this is straight up from China. So just don't eat it. But to don't be honest it. with you, we've had extremely good luck with this. This is just as good uh, as any of the other products we've had um, there's actually some characteristics that I like better about the straight up China glue than the foam to foam, but the foam to foam is by far, you know, a consistent, doesn't dry out in the tube, comes in the aluminized tubes, definitely has the warning labels. This one, same thing. The only reason we talk about glue like this is because glues are a sticking point for some people. <laughs> that was terrible. It was, it was perfect. Perfectly executed. <sighs> it wouldn't be a Brian Phillips RC. You forgot video. your Q-tip. Are you kidding me? Oh, you got, where'd that come from? I had it in places I can't talk about. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so the aluminized tube, sometimes when you open, it just starts coming out right away. So you wanna contain yourself and be careful. Now, normally I don't glue this side because it will push onto the plane. I like to glue the inside of the cone. And so what I'm doing here is just getting a really, really light layer. Now, if you don't know what China Glue is, China Glue is like a mucilage-based product. Don't be confused with the product we used to use from Hobby King. Hobby King stuff has just pissed me off too many times on dried tubes. I loved mucilage. It was like my favorite glue for a long, long, long time. And then they started sending them and they were dry in the tubes and I couldn't get it out. It was a little bit thicker, a little less runny. And that's not necessarily a big problem. It's just that when it's thick, it's good for repairs, but it's not necessarily good for doing like this sort of finish work, okay? Now you could also use CA. If you like CA, I'm not trying to poo-poo CA, it's just harder to keep up with CA. I can have 10 tubes of this stuff, brand new, and they're unpierced lids, okay? I could have 10 tubes of this and they, uh, they come opened. So just look at this. Even though the cap seals it nicely, this stuff comes with the opened tip, okay? and it likes to poop out too when you open it. Mm-hmm. So because of the aluminized shape, or it keeps its shape from the last squeeze. So just be, be wary of that. You know, Make good decisions with your glue budget because glue is not free and it doesn't always last forever either. 
So it's not like, you know, Elmer's glue that you could just have sitting in a tube for 10 years on your shelf. That stuff will dry out too. Anybody who has done woodworking knows what I'm talking about. Okay, so now I've got the majority of the glue I'm gonna put in here. Now this stuff, you want to let it set up for a minute before you stick it together. That's called cooking off, if you wanna use that terminology. I may have gotten that terminology from Steve Hands from Killer Planes. Killer um, Planes. Hands. His name is Steve. I talk to Steve occasionally. Steve's a good guy. I like Steve. I wonder if we'll see him at Bigfoot. I doubt it. Oh, by the way, if you guys come to Bigfoot, we'll see you there. It's going to be great. I know we mentioned it just minutes ago, but the thing is, for me and Megan, it's been like 10 minutes ago. So I wanted to bring it up again in case you hadn't forgotten. And also, when you buy these planes from the links in the video description below, you help support our channel because we get financial contributions from these guys, not from you, which is amazing. Then you don't have to pay us to do this stuff, and they do instead. It's a great win-win environment. The other thing, too, is it helps us to keep these guys interested in working with us because who doesn't want to run a company where some idiot is going to do free marketing for them and then only contingent upon if you sell something. That's what we do. And we say the same thing either way. So that, we're going to that's tell right. you if it's Yeah, because we're going to tell you if it's great or if it's terrible. And that's the reason why it's really important for us to have a large swath of RC options because when they suck, we tell you they suck. And when we tell you they suck, the manufacturers usually don't like that too much. But instead of saying that they suck, we let you know like where you could use it for. So like if you needed a, something to fill your garbage can. <laughs> or if there was a similar but better option. Yeah, and that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. We don't try to push the best, fastest, bluest, greenest model, whatever. We just, that's a bunch of BS. It's a waste of your time. Every model stands to be good for something, except for dinos. <clears throat> Did I say that out loud? You said filling garbage cans. That was an option. That's true. No, truthfully, and I take that back. Even Dynams have a time and place. And there was a couple of good... Dynam did a good DC3. That's totally what I was thinking of. Sort of. Well, that was still like a half-day build. You remember? Putting the wings on it was like terrible. Oh, and speaking of terrible, terror. Okay, so if you use the China, China glue or this China glue or mucilage from Hobby King, which fine, if you buy it from Hobby King... Just remember, buy it and use it right away. Don't buy yeah, don't like buy six tubes of, of it. Buy it when you're getting a plane, bring it in, use it right away because it's going to probably dry out on you. Just so you can see, I am trying to take this off. I can't take it off. Okay? I'm not going to lick my fingers on camera. That'd be disgusting. That's gross. I would normally do that usually once or twice a video. Okay. All right. So the nose cone's on. We don't have to worry about that drying because it's like I could literally hold the plane from that tip right now. Okay? So now Miss Kitty is going to go where? Well, hold on a second because the prop strike thing is going to set behind. the stage. It's but I mean, behind, truthfully, though. you can put this as high as you want. So I think what we do is, can we tell exactly where the prop thing goes? Yes. Okay. Look at the box. Now we're not going to do all the decals. We're just going to do a select few. We'll probably do the front half of the nose, of the nose just to get you started to wet your whistle. And then you can imagine what it'd be like if we did all of them. Okay. So we have prop, danger, prop, okay? Okay. So the propeller goes here, and it looks like they gave us, why did they give us so many? There's only two sides that should say propeller, right? Because the propeller goes vertical, and it's lined up with, oh, but we're not gonna be able to set that until we have the nacelle here, right? Well, we can it We can approximate it, look. We'll just take one of the nacelles, which by the way, these nacelles, they are left and right. Okay, so that says channel 5B. This says channel 5C, channel 5B, channel 5C. Ooh, crap. How are we going to tell which one's which? I, there's stuff in the manual, I think, about it. Well, we the reason I say is because there is a left and a right. Yeah, these are, these are going to be size dependent. Side dependent, right. not size dependent. Um, because one has the left gear, one has the right gear. And it's very difficult to tell from looking at the nacelle. The only difference I can tell is that there is a drop down here and there is not a drop down here, which means this would go on this side of the plane to match the dihedral of the wing, okay? So again, more of the stuff you get on Brian Phillips RC that the other guys don't talk about because they just assume you're smart enough to figure it out. And I just tell you because I have no idea if you're smart enough to figure it out because I'm usually not. Okay, see this? Deeper, shallower. Do you okay. see what I'm, t mm -hmm. am yeah. I making sense here? Yeah. Okay. And then this is going to be the one that goes here. Not that it makes a huge difference, but I'm just going to line that up with the pocket. 
And then that tells me, okay, so this panel line is pretty dang close to where that prop is gonna hit. Okay, which okay. is where they're Just going. inside. So we can avoid some of the dimpling, right? Okay. I mean, or do we need to wait until the prop is on? They're showing it, it's gonna be harder to put on. They're showing it just outside that first panel line here. They don't even show the prop on in this picture. No. What the heck? Really? Well, we could also just like, we could also just put a prop on. Look. No. No, not the whole thing, just this assembly. Cause I wanna make sure it's lined up. It matters. So it is. Okay. Oh, that's a good thing I like Don't you. Don't fall. Depends on the day. Sure. Okay. So this is the front half, back half of the assembly, which these are the same, okay? Cause you're just gonna manipulate uh, different props into this housing, okay? So you can buy spare props and they're small and easy to store for planes like this, which is nice. Yeah, that's Provided true. you don't need, because like when you build these big props, they're, I mean, when they're big, they're big. They take up a lot of room. Okay, so this is gonna tell us exact placement. See, lock it in like it's hot, okay? So right there, I'm just lining this up, folks. I don't know the exact orientation of the wing. The wing is gonna narrow as it comes out, of course. Oh yeah, hon, I'm telling you right now. Come look at this. We need to be in like two dimples. Check it yourself. Look, this, the wing is not like going forward. It's basically straight on the leading edge. Okay, so you're okay. saying where? I'm saying if you line this up right here, okay, and I'm lining up this box with the leading edge of the wing, it's gonna be, oh, but that's right. This actually goes in front of that. See, look, the way that this goes into the wing, look, mm -hmm. it's actually forward of it, boom. So that means this is actually gonna be forward by a pretty fair amount. So you're saying just on the line? I'm saying they have it just in front of the line. Okay, so it's gonna be like this. They yeah. have it just in front of this That's line right. here. That's show right, them, show them the view. I'm simulating it the best I can. I think okay. that's gonna be close enough. Well, but I mean, it's gonna dictate where Kitty Kitty goes. I know, but it, so if we're here, then she- if we put Kitty Kitty in the wrong Then spot. she has to be in front of this. She'll have here. a red line across her She's gonna... explanation point. <laughs> that would be terrible. That would ruin my day. If I had a red line warning people about the spinning object. <laughs> Next to my exclamation point. Okay, we're just, we're gonna go with it, right in front of the line. Okay. All right, guys, waffling, Brian Phillips RC, it's what we're best at. Um, all right, this is longer than that. How the heck am I supposed to tell which one's which? One goes up and around more than the other. That's why there's four. See, these are short, these are long. Does one of the liveries have a different prop warning? Are you kidding me? Here, you look there, I'm gonna look here. Yeah, because one of them has, uh, evidently it wraps around the top a little bit further. It looks like they all come out the same spot on the nacelle. If you look the little teeny bit that you can see. Yeah, so you're thinking, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I'm assuming longer is better, right? I mean, you get to make that judgment call, I guess, on this move. But propeller is centered in here. Am I missing something here? I feel stupid right now. Why do I feel so dumb? That should be centered on the red line though. This should be definitely centered. Why would they give us one to confuse us like that? I hate I it when they know. do stuff like that. Okay, should I just, so you're saying longer is better. So basically the propeller port, part is gonna go here and it's gonna wrap the top of the plane. It's gonna go all the way up over no, the top. It's gonna start right here and then it's gonna go all the way down like almost yeah, to the look gear where door. The, look where the propeller is marked, look. The, this is going to wrap the top of the, you know, okay, like I the windscreen. Okay, I see what you're screen. saying. Okay, then use the short one. I guess we're using the short one, guys. See, this is why we have a woman involved. Because then she can it follow is. instructions <laughs> and correct me when I'm wrong. Because I'm usually wrong, and I just don't know it <laughs> until she tells me. Uh, I'm going to get an X-Acto knife, guys. If you don't have an X-Acto knife in your inventory of tools, in get one. Yeah, I mean, if you don't, yeah, in your kitchen. Everybody does this in their kitchen. A lot of people do this in their kitchen. They just hear about it. Okay, see how I did that? That was actually brilliant. 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 You remember that cartoon where there's that cat that was like a brainiac? It was called Pinky and the Brain. Brilliant. I wasn't allowed to watch that. You weren't? <laughs> Why? So you didn't learn to be mastermind? 
Good thing at least one of us got that in our lives. That's true. Oh, yeah. Okay, so just in front. And I'm just going to hold this. Guys, we don't normally show. Did you grease this? Did you grease it? I didn't. You did. There we go. That's clean. Okay. I'm going to go right here. And we're just, we're, guys, this is throwing caution to the wind, folks. Straight to the wind. Oh, and the truth is, like, this would be on top of the rivets in real life anyway. Ah, if I would have gone down just a hair more, I would have been perfectly aligned. Okay, so the, the key is this top joint there, this joint here, and then so on and so forth. Amazing. Wow. See, in a normal video, we would have just minutes. clipped. We would have edited. Wait, you're not going to flip it around, right? Oh, no, we're just, just going to do this one side. side. Now yeah. we know where Miss Kitty goes. Kitty, Kitty goes. Not Miss Kitty, that's the other option. Okay, now they placed her over here. I feel like it needs to be centered well, more. Well, then put your danger, then we have to put the danger things here so we make sure we don't get too close to her. Oh, That's the only other thing we need to do. Why do they not have dangers on that? They do, okay. <laughs> they do. Danger, danger. Brian Phillips thinking zone. Okay, I got the backing that time. Well, whatever. Um, okay, I'm gonna try the other side here. These decals, some of them are trimmed better than others, guys. There we go, I think I got it that time. This is why I use an X-Acto knife, in case you're wondering. Because if you have an X-Acto knife, you can usually separate these better than if you don't have an X-Acto knife. Oh, good lordy lord. Why did I decide to do this bent over like this? I'm getting too old for that. Because we're running out of space on the... Oh, island. we are? Okay, so now this time we can go roughly centered and I, I just want to do it in such a way are they centered are all the dangers centered yes you, they are yes they are centered so I'm going to go just above the panel yeah, line that's like how they have it on theirs okay where Rich Baker put his no Rich did the BP one he did the BP one yeah. really oh cool good for him thank you Rich for that that was super sensitive of you. I'm sure he was thinking of you he was like well I want to make sure people know about Brian Phillips they can follow his links instead of mine Okay, right there. By the way, guys, I've been watching Rich fly airplanes for many, many moons. He's a good pilot. Much superior pilot to me. Oh, that looks good. I didn't even line it up that great, but I'm gonna tolerate it because now it's on there. All right, so now we need to take some warm water and we wanna put it in a dish, a dish. That would just be a plate. Listen, it's going to be a dish. I'm waiting for this stuff to get hot. While I wait for it to get hot. Mmm. That's good water. We always hide that because like, <laughs> we don't want to look human. That's why we do this in our kitchen. For those of you that don't realize this, this is where the real magic happens in our actual kitchen. So... All right, here it is. I'm gonna put that in the hot water and let her get all hot and bothered. Whoa, here, kitty kitty. See, it says here, kitty kitty. Oh, wow, you cannot see that at all. You cannot see that until you get it wet. Hmm. Interesting. So that being said, we're gonna let this sit. You're supposed to let it sit for two. Quit your... This is, this is a hey. new release. We have to be good. <laughs> no. No, that's... You're gonna need a paper towel while you're over there. Okay. So I've got a paper towel. And we're going to use the paper towel to do what? You have to dry it off. Okay, so this is going to go roughly here and then basically off camera now that we've set the stage. Now, the only reason we did that part on camera is because like decals are decals. Most people can figure out decals. If there's something uniquely difficult about a decal that we encounter, we will share it in the video. Um, also, I just wanted to make sure to, to show that they actually do, I mentioned this earlier, but they actually do give you the layout. We yeah. did not have a layout on the F-18. It was, I spent hours looking up images. Yeah, and this should be shorter just because we don't have to, who was that? Bug. I was we trying to squish a bug. find them all. Um, but yeah, so if you guys are, if you're doing this at home and you're like, I need help finding decal locations that it's in the manual, uh, that comes with the box. Okay. Yeah. It's a little bit folded manual, but it'll still work for that. 
Um, so we're gonna basically give this another couple seconds. You can see her you hand see, is lifting. Yeah. Usually once it lifts, you should be good to go. And my, my take on wet decals is very, very basic. Um, I don't do any transfer paper or any of that crap. You can do that if you want, and there's nothing wrong with it, but you don't want to rip her in half, okay? Yeah, that'd be bad. That'd be bad for her and you, okay? So I, I'm certain this is going to come off of here now. And incidentally, while that's going, I don't want to start that until we get the other side no, done because we need either. to set the prop location. Yep. Okay, so once we do this, she, her knees are down here over there. And so I'm just going to go like this. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. It's almost like they mean something different by kitty. I'm not sure what they could have meant. Ooh, that's not sticking very good. Surprised, figured it'd be super sticky. Um, okay. So now I usually do this, and this is what camera crew was talking about. I usually tamp this until the air bubbles sort of work their way out. This is a really big decal though. It is, and that's, there's so many rivets. It's gonna- I know, it's gonna be really hard to get this thing to stick. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press right on the big squishy package of air bubbles. <laughs> Camera crew, stop. I didn't do anything. We're just gonna do this right here and we're pressing that down. It's, it's pulling away, like it's making me nervous. Like we're not gonna get good adhesion. I really want this to look right. Do you need to take a pin and like- Poke it? Yeah. She got water coming out from under her hand here. Usually once you get that hydraulic effect out, it helps a lot. But like on this one, it's just like, it's so big in this middle area. There's... I could pierce it. I've done this before. It usually helps a little bit, but it doesn't always. I'm just afraid, like sometimes you have to pull to get the whole shape down, you know? And they were talking about taking the clear part off in, I have in no the instruction manual. And I'm about. like, I have no clue what they're talking about. If there's like a clear covering on this, I am not aware of it. See, I think you need to poke right there. Where? Like in your boobs. No. Where? Right here. Right, oh, that spot. Okay, so right in front of it? Yeah. And it presses down. I'm gonna use my pinky now and see if I can walk it in here. There's already kind of like a rip right there. I really wish that it would stick down better. It doesn't seem like it's gonna stick very good. Oh, I moved her. Okay, so anyway, you get the idea. This is basically what happens with water decals. If you have a problem, I usually go and get a little bit of water and see if I can get it to reseat. And yes, you can actually take water to these after the fact and sometimes get them to release if you need to reposition them a little bit. That was one thing I had to do on a few of those decals over there on the F-18. That was a real task though. This one's just gonna be the one specialty and you don't have to put this on there. You could do your own. And I know some of you guys are really good with, you know, doing different artwork or calligraphics for stickers and things like that. That would be a cool way to do it if you don't like the choices. But I think the liveries are pretty good on this. They yeah. give two different options. No, four. Um, or excuse me, what's well, actually five. Technically for five, this. yeah. I just don't know what we're going to do about these rivets, though. But see, so you're going to have that problem with any of the choices. So we're just going to have to figure out how to... Yeah, true, Deal they're all gonna be the same. Okay, so anyway, you get the idea. We have to have that on there if we intend to have it on there for the flight, which is hopefully gonna be just like maybe an hour and a half or something, whenever we're done with the Unbox Build radio setup. She's laughing, like that's, <laughs> this is gonna be, this is a low piece count. It's not gonna take that long to build. I'm serious, like you're just thinking about the F-18. Oh, and so we were talking about the receiver, but we can't talk about the receiver until we're done with decals because we'll come back. That way these things can be drying back and, and as time goes by, you'll notice that these things will stick a little bit better. Um, but if, if it doesn't, you may have to relay it. Now, here's another trick you can do if you don't have adhesive glue, which I don't. Uh, you can actually take the piece that you threw away and there's actually adhesive on here, okay? There's just a little bit of it and you can tell it's a slimy substance. And sometimes if you have to, you have to take it off, which is terrible, and then put it back onto the substance and try to get it more glue on it. I mean, that's, that's the only way I know how to do it. Yeah. And uh, I believe you can buy decal glue, but I've never really had good luck with it. So that being said, this will dry. Those rivets are just gonna be tough. I was noting how well they were raised earlier because like you can feel them so good. Yeah. That's where these vinyl decals really shine is pressing over those. So, yep. all right guys, we'll be back in a minute. Stay tuned. 
All right, so we have the decals on. Obviously, the here kitty 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 is the only sticker slash, it's actually a decal that's drying. And to be honest, it went on pretty poor. And so that's a bummer. But everything else went super smooth, as you can see. I even marked, I put my stars and bars on wrong on the other side, and two miracles happened. I was able to redo that decal that says MX70 whatever. I repositioned it because I made a mistake on its exact position and I pulled it off and put it back on. That's a miracle, that never happens. And same thing with this, I actually had to peel it and put it one, I put one row of rivets too low, mm -hmm. which should have been super obvious to me, but I made a mistake. I was just gonna say that's unheard of. That means the paint quality on this plane is really good because usually it peels off. Okay, so let's talk about these gun. Uh, these guns need to be installed. They're screw in, very nice. And then also one other detail I ran into, this pedo tube, I think this is a pedo tube, I accommodated for that by taking my X-Acto knife and piercing one small hole in this decal after installing it. And then I press the vinyl in deeper, okay? So that's gonna work fine. These things always are the first things to break off, both the antennas. This antenna is gonna fit up here. It's gonna look super sweet. And I tr trust me, if you're transporting this in a car or a truck to your field, unlike us where we just walk out to the field, then these things, don't glue them unless you have to, okay? We'll glue ours because we're here, okay? This is gonna be here, this is gonna be here, ready to go, along with the ordnance, which didn't take any decals. Now, another thing I wanna point out about the decals, there's a lot of extras. Obviously, I am Brian Phillips, so we were trying to figure out a way to put this BP on here somewhere, and we just haven't come up with it yet. Once it's assembled, we'll make a decision if we wanna apply these. We know it won't be, you know, historically accurate, but that's okay because my name is Brian Phillips. So that being said, and also I wanted to remind you that this kit, we had one that had flipped over. Uh, down here in that corner. That corner. So that red, white stars and bars, the red, white, and blue, that one was sort of handed to us. Okay, now yours probably is gonna have that same issue. And so if you run into it, of course, there's somebody flying out the window too, which is ironic. <laughs> But um, if yours gets handed to you and it's the other way around, this had the white stars and bars, and this had the red and white stars and bars, okay? The blue, of course, is the backdrop. But we also had these danger stickers, and I was like, we are gonna use the danger stickers. And so I put danger at all the gun ports because there's like four gun ports here on the fuse, and then there's four guns on the wing. Now, I am gonna put these on now. Normally, I wouldn't put this type of um, decoration, although what the heck? That doesn't seem like it's biting at all. The inboard one is the one that's supposed to receive that, almost certainly, but then the outboard one's supposed to be the short one. That one definitely is screwing in. Did you see what just happened? Well, look. Try it again, sometimes you gotta stick it in there twice before it. Oh. That is like not biting anything. What the heck? So. That's very weird. This is like way longer though. Um, hold on, I'm gonna see, this one's biting. I'm gonna see if I can pull it forward. Like if they push the nuts are back, maybe, maybe that's not the way it is. Maybe my drawing has confused me. Because if you look at the drawing, it's on page seven. I wanted to put these details on on camera so you could see how sweet it is. Uh, where is the picture? Oh, see they show them there. So maybe it's the long one here, so they end up being the same barrel length. I kind of hope that's the way it is because, look, that doesn't bite either. What the heck? So try try this one. Maybe like that one is a dud. Yeah, I doubt it. I just think it's farther back than it can reach. Yeah, because like there's not a... Oh, no, it got it that time. It got it, so I'm going to go with it. Okay. Whatever. Could have been just uh, once I got that on there and tugged it out, it was good. This one's like really working to get in there. Let me go back to the original one, which is this one. Huh, that is so weird. Like why would this one work? And I don't know, I just hope the other one works. Yeah. So I normally put would put a detail like this on, but it's so far inboard, I feel like it's gonna be kind of hard to do once it's on the plane. And so far it's been important because they haven't gone on as smooth as I want them to. I think you need Short one needs to be, no, you're right, sorry, backwards. Okay, so we're good there. Haha, <laughs> same issue. Okay, so I'm gonna take this one, 
pull it out, and I'm going to use it to reach in there deeper because this has more threads than this, as you can see. So I wonder if they screwed this in too far to the actual plastic. I don't know. It's mm. not unscrewing for me. So let's try doing this. Let's try getting this biting the nut zert. There's a nut zert somewhere back in there that's held in the assembly. If I pull hard on it, I wonder if it'll come out some. Or maybe that just cleans the thread holes a little bit. Oh man, that's gonna suck if we don't have this gun. That definitely reaches. It's weird that they made those, and that stuff is almost always like just glue, glue on. In. Okay, I have an idea for this. Guys, if you ever have one like this, I can't necessarily say this is gonna for sure work. Worst case scenario, I could glue it in, okay? I don't wanna do that though. Okay, look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to grab it with these pliers. If the threads line up reasonably, I'm gonna go way up on the front so we can try to not mar the threads. I'm gonna hold it really tight and see if I can spin this. Not feeling very promising. That sucks. Hmm. I wonder if I can heat it up and spin it out. This will be the first problem we've had on this plane, mm. other than self-imposed problems. Because I feel like this is probably dipped into a, a molding. Too, and it's just dipped too yeah. far. Yeah, and then, yeah, but it's threaded. So I don't know if they dip the head of the bolt in or- Could you take an X-Acto knife and just cut Take a some of the material? Off? Yeah, we could try. Um, given the circumstances, I don't think you're gonna notice any, any different. I feel like Oops. melting it might screw up the plastic. Okay, so I'm just gonna take like as a little bit as much as I can I can take. Don't okay. cut yourself. No, I'm not gonna cut myself. I'm just I did that the other day, so I should be good for a few years. Okay. Okay, so I'm just like riding along the edge here. You guys should hopefully not have to do this. Now I'm gonna do the smart thing and get some strippers out. Strippers like this. See, this should be about the same shaft diameter. It's similar. And I'll just cut it and then cut it and then cut it and then cut it. Oops, didn't get a very good cut that time because I had that sharp edge I had cut with the X-Acto knife. So now this is camera crew's idea. Oh, sure. Hopefully it works. Well, now that you have, since it was attributed to you, then it <laughs> will work. Okay, so we're gonna take that off. So we took off just a little bit of that. So we should get a little bit better purchase now. I'm just gonna clean up this last little bit. I'm just kind of spinning it now, as opposed to pressing. I mean, it barely needs to hold on. It's not like no, it's I know. holding it's not, the thing together. Yeah, it's not like a structural member, right. but still it's annoying um, that we would have to do this. It's unusual too, because the build quality on this has been amazing. Yeah. Like everything I've looked at has been second to none. Oh, it just feels like it's right on the cusp. I mean, there's definitely threads down there because we could use the other one, but there's such a long disparity. Okay, let's try that one more time and see if we can take just a little bit more length off of the, the plastic part, leaving a little bit more gun and a little bit more thread to gun ratio. Okay, so I'm gonna try it with just the cutters this time, see if that works. I'm just scoring it here, taking another, I don't know, eighth of an inch or so. Maybe three millimeters, something like that, four millimeters maybe. And just kind of cutting around. And the, the idea is I don't want to cut the whole thing out. Right. So if you take too much, then you'll for sure ruin it. Now, worst case scenario, like I said, I could just glue this thing in there and, and you'd probably never know any better. I can feel metal in there as I'm doing this, as I'm biting along it. The shaft of metal is still definitely got good penetration where we are. Okay, so now I may even be able to just spin it off. Yeah, see? I'm just gonna walk it off of there by unthreading it. So that should get us more length to work with. Okay, we were talking about this earlier. This is the type of stuff you see on this channel and everybody deals with it in the hobby, but nobody else covers this stuff. They just assume you're gonna figure it out. And um, not everybody figures it out. Okay, we're in. Oh yeah! I'm so glad my idea worked. Yeah, well no, that's a good idea. I mean, we kind of came up with the idea together. Oh, now you're gonna try and take yeah, it. Yeah, it was really, it was really our, it was yeah, our idea. Our idea, not, sure not just yours. Yeah. Okay, so then let's also talk about decals here. 
Um, okay, so we, off camera, of course, I put these decals on. Uh, one tip is when you, these are the reverse ones, okay? I took and marked R for reverse. R, R. Yes, Okay. So you can also tell by just looking at them. I did not damage that. I did not crash yet. I haven't had the opportunity yet. That was broken off in the bag, which is a bummer because it may actually throw it out of balance a little bit. So we might have to get some yellow paint or yellow nail polish. Do you have yellow nail polish, mm -hmm. opaque yellow? Yeah. We'll touch that up at some point, but it's gonna be like my first flight, I'll probably hit it on the ground then. Um, okay, and then also I wanted to note that I got four screws and four nuts on this, even though there's only three holes to use. But that is customary from FMS to give you one extra. Well, this, I only got three, okay? So interestingly enough, now I know which side is which, and I know which side is which, because if you look at the drawings on the box, you can see that this prop is on the, what would be our left, the pilot's right, okay? So this is gonna spin like that toward the fuse and down toward the fuse and down, okay? This is gonna be over here, so it's gonna go toward the fuse and down. So it's gonna look totally sweet. And that's just the way it is based on everything I've seen in the book, everything I've seen on the books uh, or on the uh, boxes. Sometimes, you know, they almost never go like this. I, I don't know why. Not sure that there's some rationalization for it, but either way, let's get these built. Oh, okay. Okay. So that opens up, they've got just a little bit of glue or stickiness on there, so I don't wanna find out what that is. Uh, okay, so we'll just drop these in. I do not know if these are going to matter which side's which, I don't think they do. I don't know how they would, but it's possible that they do. Now, the way this works is you put the top on after you get the first set of screws in, if I remember right. Nope, not on this system. Some of them take screws now, and some of them take screws at the end, okay? So I think on this one, since there's only four screws, that means you must, you have to spin these sometimes to find the home position, okay? Oh, so the screw's gonna go all the yeah, way through the Yeah, it goes the all the way through assembly. the assembly. Okay. But sometimes, sometimes the screw passes from the bottom down, and then other times it passes from the top down. Cause like, if you look at these, they're designed to receive um, screws through different positions. Now, there's a nut that's on the backside and it's gonna retain that, the nylock, of course the nylon portion of the nylon nut, nut the locking nut needs to go uh, toward the bottom here. And that would be normal because you want the nylon as far away from the head of the screw as you can get it. Because otherwise you undermine the nylon by running through it more often. Okay, so this is number uh, two millimeter. So we're just gonna get these started. It's a really easy assembly. It's just more a matter of you, you kind of have to get it right because it's like an important part on the plane. And I'm so annoyed that the here kitty 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 is gonna end up having air pockets all over. <sighs> Don't need any more curves on that thing. No, not really. But that being said, if it does, I'm just afraid those rivets are so tall yeah. And they look really, really good, but you might want to take your thumb and just flatten them before you actually put that decal on. It's just, it's just going to be hard to control how much you're flattening them. But that would be a tip you could do mm -hmm. if you want. Otherwise, the decals went super smooth, and I actually had a really good time putting them on. Oh, lost just a... Uh, lost your nut. Lost my nut. Sorry about that, camera crew. Just too busy talking about the... Nose art. The extra bumps. The extra bumps and waviness. Mm -hmm. I think I said curves. Curves. Okay, so now look at this, guys. You see this? That's where you're gonna know when you're collapsed all the way, is when that thing starts to close, okay? And yes, these things will wear out your thumb. I'll tell you what. Well. Correct? Yes. Okay, so you see? Starting to close, starting to close, starting to close, starting to close. Now it's kind of closed and you want to start really resisting so you don't over tighten and break something. Same thing here. You can see it's like it started to close, but it's not closed. And this is basically how you're going to do both props. Okay. Now you can still go onto a prop balancer with this if you want and then make sure that it's balanced. Um, but usually, I don't know, in my experience on prop balancing, Unless the prop presents a noise or a problem, I just kind of go with it because you're gonna know if there's a problem because it's gonna be obvious in my ex experience. 
Now these are extras, not uncommon for them to give us extras. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna lay these over here. And there's only two main sizes of hardware on this plane, by the way. And they are, if you don't include the prop, it's this long and this short, okay? Long and short. And they are also two millimeters. A lot of screws. It is a lot of screws. But honestly, this is not very many screws for how big this plane no, is. This is a huge plane. A We've used a little teeny tiny bit of glue, which is not a big deal. And you, they were supposed to use CA for the nose cone. Right. But I always use China glue whenever possible. I just like China glue better. We do have new CA, but there's no reason to open it for that. Well, I mean, we'll eventually open it anyway. But are we, are we showing them this whole same thing? Well, I mean, I figured we would just show them both in case like something strange happens. Okay. We could pause, we'll come back. All right, so that's a nice pair, wouldn't you say? That is a nice pair. So we're gonna use these to attach them on to the respective nacelles. Okay, so we were talking just off camera here and my camera crew and I came to a decision then I changed it. Just now? So we're gonna do the tail oh. first. <laughs> well, cause I wanna get something done and so I feel like the tail is gonna be the things. easiest next move, okay? okay? So this says elevator here. It's pretty obvious what that means, okay? So remember, brown is up or brown is down. In this case, brown is toward my belly. Brown is down, brown is down, okay? Now there's nowhere to put this except for into this cavity here, and it's pretty small. So honestly, I'm not sure exactly how all that's gonna work. Mm -hmm. Ew, goodness gracious. And then this is, a, this is a, gonna be like kind of a challenging wing joiner to add. I wonder how exactly I'm gonna do it. Can you hold that just for a sec? I feel like, oh wait, does that even go through there? I can't tell. Let's try the first one. Cause yeah, that's obviously gonna go to the other one. There's a lot less extra on that. There's almost like a pocket. Oh, you know what that is? That's balsa wood or not balsa wood, but plywood that's reinforcing this frame. Right in there, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, okay, so that explains that. So now let's push this through to the other side. But you see what I'm talking about? There's just like nowhere to put this extra cable except for this little pocket here. Maybe that's where we should try to put it. Right there. Cause then that guarantees us we won't interfere with anything else. These, these little steps are sometimes some of the more challenging steps in the build because like there aren't express, there aren't explicit instructions on exactly how to do this. Okay, so you see what I did there? I got it bundled up, trying to hold it with my hand. Camera crew is gonna push gently against the frame. I'm gonna put the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer in and then roll it into position so I can keep this from ripping off all the paint. It is challenging to do that. And on these darker colored planes, you gotta be more careful because it shows up from a mile away. See what I'm talking about? Oh, there it goes. Okay, sweet. All the way in, there it is. Perfect. Okay. okay, now I gotta get, uh, I'm assuming the two shorter screws because I don't wanna guess. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. They say the 16s. Crap. So what's another example? So we know what length they are. 16s. Yep, 26s. 26s, so okay. 16s are the shorters. And you could measure them out, but like that would require getting another tool. Well, when there's only two. There's only two? Why don't they two give sizes. Many? Yeah, there's only, yeah, right. There's only two sizes, so. So on this one, I'm gonna press forward and see if I can get that, there we go, got it started. Now, I'm gonna look from this side and you guys see what I'm talking about? Show them where all the wires are. You don't normally get an open shot of that, but look at that. Yeah. That is tight as freak. Yep, it's, it's in the pocket, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Do you it. need to make sure you can get that wing spar in in case you would need to like wiggle, wiggle. the wing at all? Yeah, yeah, I do. Before you get too tight. I'm gonna get both of these screws started I'm not gonna tighten them all the way, so that's a good point. And then look at this, guys. This is an unusual position to be in, but look how tight this is. See? Mm -hmm. So you wanna be careful. And this is another pro for putting on decals first. Oh, I did have another decal issue. When I cut this one, I cut and I gouged into the foam. It looked terrible. So I ended up moving the servo, which is tough, and I put a vertical piece of additional blue and if you look at this, there's blue all over the place. This is great 
for touch-ups. Yeah. So like if you scrape your wing, you can cut some of this blue out and it is a dead nuts, perfect match. It is really good. And match. so I would normally say, put your decal away and never look at it again. But in this case, this decal is gonna be very handy for touch-ups. Okay, so definitely the back hole like we were talking about, right? I guess. So I'm gonna slide this in. And now that I have those screws started, as the camera crew feared, we're gonna have trouble with alignment. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'll back this one off. I mean, there's three things that gotta line up, so. That's a lot to line up. Yeah, but the carbon fiber spar is by far the most critical. And I'm kind of debating, you know that shorter elevator lead? I wonder if we need to start on that side because we're gonna have a harder time. Yeah, we're not gonna have anywhere to put it though. Right. Okay, so now I can wiggle this a little bit. It just doesn't want to start. Okay. Bummer. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to take this off. Sorry, guys. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it didn't. Okay. So what we're doing, you saw me debating about it because I had that spar in the wing first. I'm going to pull this back just a hair so it's not all the way out of the pocket. I'm going to brace the fuse. I'm going to see if I can get it started. Come on. There it is. I got it. It's in the hole. It's in the hole. That's where experience pays with thrusting objects. You have to do that a lot to be able to get it right like that. That's right. So we'll just go ahead and get that right there. There it is. Perfect. Whoa, whoa. Guys, I gotta say, this is a big complicated model and it's going together really easy. I am super surprised how easy it's going together. And even with these minor conflicts, guys, we've had planes that are just like really not that great of planes yeah. that we've fought a lot harder for. This plane is so pretty. It really it's is gorgeous. Very cool. And it's like strangely, it's, it's not just big and pretty, like that Ranger, give me a shot of the Ranger quick. That Ranger is pretty to me, but it's also cartoony, okay? Right. Come back. I just took this with the palm of my hand, spread out your weight across here, and I pulled it toward my belly and it dropped the screw down. It literally dropped into position. Sometimes you have to do it, but just be super careful how rough you are with the edge of your wings, because you can and will, if you press hard, you will dent the heck out of this yeah. and it will look bad forevermore. Also, if you crash into your house, that'll happen too. I've done that also, <laughs> just saying. All right, we're gonna get the other side on. I just wanted to make progress and this was like an easy way to make quick progress because I feel like the decals and everything always make me feel like I'm not making progress because you don't change the piece count much by doing decals. Right. And, uh, but I gotta say, this is actually a relatively easy build. It's just big parts. And FMS does a good job on these planes. So we generally have a pretty good experience building them. Some of the older ones, like for instance, let me give you an example. Uh, 1.4 meter, you still need to be over here. Um, 1.4 meter, one point, is it a 1.4 meter Cessna 182? That was a turning point. If you go back to that model, it is so hard to build that model and it's sold as like a beginner plane. It's not the easiest flying, Cessna that I've ever had. And I know a lot of beginners start with that plane and it's not a good plane to start with because they want a scale looking plane. It's actually a lot harder to fly than the other ones that they have. And it's also very hard to get the receiver in there because of the nature of the shape of the plane. And they've got a clear canopy and there's this like weird like HVAC system through the middle it looks like. It looks like a cool air return. Oh yeah, oh, we made it. I don't know how that worked so easy. I, it shouldn't have, but it did. And so if you guys are thinking about getting that plane, the Ranger is like way easier to build. It's easier to fly. It looks pretty dang good in the air. Uh, the Ranger 1220, for instance. And then that Cessna 182, they called it something different though. Is that one the... It's like the... Sky the Trainer? Sky Trainer, yeah. But it's totally a Cessna 182. And it's a gorgeous 182 but it's like, it's got bad habits that other planes don't have. And it's just so funny because like, that's such a subtle issue. And if you were to fly one side by side, you'd be like all day long, I'm going, 
I'm going with this, you right. know, after you flew them side by side. But that's what we try to bring here on Brian Phillips RC. It's not like always the best. Like there isn't really a best plane. Like we don't really need RC airplanes. Well, some of us do. That just dropped down again, by the way. Um, but at the end of the day, those subtle differences are hard to communicate because especially if you're not doing a head to head, even a head to head, you're flying. And then 10 minutes later, the conditions can change. You know, you can have wind going left to right. And then all of a sudden wind is going forward to backward or going right to left, which we've had in videos. All right. That's awesome. It is. This is such a sweet looking plane. I cannot wait to fly it. I'm really excited for it. Okay, now the next step is obviously not putting the wing on. We gotta put the nacelles on each of the wings. So we need to make a little bit of room. So I'm gonna put this between the two big round things. That's always fun. And uh, I wanted to show you where I put my other danger logos right there. Cause like there's guns here. So it's dangerous in front of the guns. So don't stand in front of the guns. I'm pretty sure that the military would not do that because they'd be like, if you're so stupid to stand in front of a cannon, then you deserve to get shot. That's probably <laughs> what they would say. Uh, but it is our federal government, so after all, I'm not putting a lot of faith in their ability to communicate things like that. Well, this is an old plane, so... This is an old plane. This is back when, when they did a better job. Okay, so let's talk about this for a minute. We have dihedral on the wing, and now I've flipped my wing, so I'm kind of confused. Okay, so it, it's, this is that one. How do I know? Because I just did a quick reversal in my brain. There's nutzert here, nutzert there. Nuts are here, nuts are here. So we're gonna be passing the bolts from the top to the bottom, okay? This should fit there. And just be careful not to lay it accidentally on there. I just about did it. Now we need to dig these out. We might need to get forceps for this step. I'm not sure. Channel 5C, channel 5B, okay? And then we have the actual motor leads here, okay? So we have B. Oh, they labeled them for us. Nice, thank you, FMS. See, this is the sort of stuff we used to get on. Oh, it's so weird because that's one of the weird things that have gone away in our builds. We have used to always have labeled, labeled packages, <laughs> but they would always be labeled wrong. They'd be like, uh, go to package C. And they'd be like, there's like package G and H. Yeah. Yeah, they were never right. Well, they were rarely right. Rarely. There were, sometimes they were right. Okay, so we have, uh, looks like C, B, and A. Oh. I thought of this too while I was perusing the manual looking for where those danger logos, the danger, danger decals went. And I found page 21 and page 22. There is, by the way, there's the breakdown of how everything hooks up, but your, but your differential, oh, we were talking about differential. We're not gonna talk about differential thrust until we get to the radio setup. Okay. okay Cause I'm probably gonna try to do differential thrust on this plane. Um, okay, so get back here is page 14 has your center of gravity, which is 70 to 80. We'll talk about that a little later after the build and radio setup's done, basically. And right here, here is your 21 and 22. This is your programming mode, okay? So I'm just gonna, if you guys wanna pause the screen or whatever, that's fine. Our ESCs allow you to program parameters to fit the specific needs. So the camera crew is gonna hold this really high and I'm gonna to try to help her. And if you need to pause it, now's when you'd pause it. Then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna show you both pages. You're gonna to have to have some healthy zoom going. But this is kind of the important one. So if you wanna use your transmitter to program, basically you enter the programming mode by holding your throttle all the way up, powering the plane, which sounds counterintuitive, it seems dangerous, but it's designed to actually force it to go into the programming mode, okay? Also, if you're not sure, don't do it with the prop on. Take the prop off, especially on a plane like this, because it's hard to secure two props. Okay, because no matter how special you are, you know, you got a prop over here. This is about the same size. You got a prop over here. Even if you're standing over here and you have secured the plane, if you got one going backward, it could pull back into your arm. Okay, so be careful. Um, that being said, we don't do a lot of nanny state stuff here. You guys are big boys and girls. You can figure it out, okay? Just don't send me pictures of your cut up hands and arms because people have done that before and it's disgusting. And, and I feel very bad that you hurt yourself, but you know, you don't have to show me, like I trust you. Okay, so we have C here, channel five C. And we actually did have people do that by the way. So yeah. if that's you, we forgive you, but still don't do it anymore. Okay, C. And it's mostly like precautionary tales. People are like really genuinely care about us. 
And, but, um, you know, there's a lot of people that die in car accidents every day. You don't have to send me pictures of that either. So, okay, we have brown. Okay. And then we have black. I think part of it is that people just assume that because we, we aren't in any state, like we think that people can't get hurt in the hobby. And that's, that's not true. I am the biggest worry wart you've ever met in your entire life. I just don't show it on camera because true. it doesn't show well. <laughs> okay, so B and C. Okay. All right. So now these. Those are gonna be a little challenging to plug in. C is black. A is black. Okay, so C is red. So black to red, oh God, this is gonna suck. I gotta think how I wanna do this. I think we're gonna go forcep action. Okay. I don't know how you're gonna do it without forceps because it's just gonna be tight. This looks like a four hand thing. Uh, you were just about to string some words together. No, oh, that's all I said. <laughs> Change your mind, I see. <laughs> we need to go back to the old days. The old days oh, of no. using pillows. Oh. What? What did you think I was gonna I say? I don't know where you're going with that. <laughs> Oh wait, I'm, a towel might be better. You're gonna a need blank a blanket. I, no, blanket's too big. We need like a towel from my wife's kitchen. Cause I gotta protect the, the foam from this part. Oh, just that part? Yeah, so, okay. so I can lay it here. Oh, it's so cute, my little baby. So cute. Not very long though. Good thing our kids are not up here. <laughs> feel bad. Um, okay, so this is, this is C. So process of elimination, if I get two, the third will be easy. So that's A, so A is red. So yeah. So the only color that's gonna agree is B, yellow. which is yellow, okay. All right, so you guys see kind of why I'm struggling. Look at this, it's far away from my belly. I gotta bend over, I, I'm sorry, cam crew, I that's can't okay. reach, my back is killing me moving. leaning like that. Okay, so now we have to figure out a way to get this to go together. So basically black is not going to black. Black is going to red, correct? Yes. Okay. Now I'm gonna hold this with the forceps, the straight ones, not the bent ones. Don't get any ideas. YouTube sensors, relax. Okay, then we've got the uh, red one here. Up, oh, I hooked, immediately did it. You see what I did? Black to black is not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be red to black, correct? Yes. Okay, so I am currently holding C. So C is gonna go to red. Now yours is probably different, folks, so don't, don't just depend on what I do in this part of the video um, because I can't guarantee it's gonna be the same on yours. You see what I'm doing? I'm holding on to the part that's, that's not the wire. I don't wanna damage the wire. The yellow is correct. B should be it's yellow. It's gonna be yellow. the same color to the same color. Can you turn on your light? Thank you. Does that help? Mm, not really, it's just that I get all weirded out when somebody's, if you've ever had somebody hold a flashlight and you're like, you always feel like they're holding it in the wrong spot, it could be that my wife is holding the flashlight or <laughs> Thanks. she's holding a camera and it's like, <laughs> I'm blocking my own light, but I think it's her because my body is like, oh, you couldn't possibly block your own light. Right, but you could. So you see this? But you could. I think we got that right because we flip-flopped our black and red, okay? Now these wires, we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with these. I'm hoping there's a cavity in here I can stuff them. That'd be good. And that was a little bit awkward, but it wasn't too bad. We've had a heck of a lot worse. I thought it was worse. gonna be way worse, yeah. Well, it's a good thing I got that towel. But you gotta be able to get all that stuff in that pocket, right? You have to just stuff a lot of stuff right into a tight spot. It's kind of dark messy. and hard to see. But like I said, God, good thing we got a towel so we can make sure that things go smoothly. Good Lord. That's a lot of stuff. I know, it's like there's a pocket back here. You see there's an opening here, mm -hmm. but I gotta make sure that's out of the way so we can pass down that little plug. And there's a plug that goes here too, and that's why I'm trying desperately to get this Wait, stuff. what plug? There's a, there's a plug. It's not like a plug, but just like a physical chunk that goes into a hole. Oh. Like think in, like an infant play toy where there's like triangle shape, circle shape. Since when do you know all these things about babies? <sighs> Goodness gracious, we have four of them for God's sake. Um, but I'm just having a heck of a time getting this last one in here. 
Sorry guys, this is not very fun to watch when I'm struggling like this, but I'm sure some of you are pointing and laughing and I want to encourage that as much as possible. There we go, there we go. Oh, oh, it's so close. Now it's gotta be long enough to reach this front because there's a plug on the front. And then I gotta get all that crap down into the pocket hole. And then your towel, can I move this? Um, yeah, if it's in the way, please do. Yep. Okay. Just move it. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna slide this back. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's awkward. If you wanna give them a shot for my right side, I'm gonna show you what I'm dealing with. See this now? You got okay. two extra wires. Can you imagine if we had to build this all from scratch, how like tedious every step would have been? That's why we don't. Yeah, but there's lots of people that do. I know, and that's totally fine. If you love that sort of thing, go for it. I used to do that with my grandpa before he passed away and we had a good time doing it. I mean, he did the like tediously terrible jobs and then he would just draw me in to help kind of electrify it is what he called it. Yeah. He loved building. He mm -hmm. loved the process of building. Yeah, he loved all this frustrating crap. And then after he built, he built a, a pits, right? Or wait, well, that wasn't a pits. That was a SIG. That was a SIG. Oh, crap. What was that thing called? The red one? Yeah. It's got a weird name. It's like the Duinger or the No, Duinier. no, no. That was a different plane altogether. But I'm talking about the biplane because he said he'll never build one again after that one because it was so hard to get everything right. Oh my goodness. Let's suppose like in a universe where Brian, is it possible that I have like the literal wrong nacelle here? Cause I'm pretty sure I thought that through correctly. That's a pretty good fit up here if it's not. Cause look, this wouldn't fit if I had the wrong nacelle, correct? Right, so. See, there's gotta be something binding me still. And that's what I'm fighting right now as the motor leads. So guys, all I'm doing is I'm just trying to move these motor leads around so that I can get clearance to actually collapse this onto itself. And like, to be honest with you, it's a lot harder than it looks, evidently. And it's really hard to film, so I apologize. I know, I know you guys can't see where the crap, so. Okay, it's going, went. Okay. There. Good. Okay. So there it is, guys. See, and there's just nothing to push on. Right. But you can see that gap is mostly closed and that gap is mostly closed. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we got to put screws in still. That was a lot better than I thought it was going to be, believe it or not, even with the struggles. Because we've had harder planes by yeah. a long shot than that. Okay. So what screws? The long ones. And then what screws hold it to the actual plane? The short ones? I don't know. There's a bunch of long ones. I know, but you're gonna need four for that wing. And then you're gonna need four for the other wing, which would be one left over. And then you need four. Look at the wing. Look at the wing root. Mm -hmm. All I can say is there's gonna be two screws on either side. But you gotta put the props on too. No, the props don't take a screw. Look, there's no screws. They're already oh. done. Oh, those screw on. That's okay. a nut. Never mind. It's a nut knob. Yep. Making sure we get all our screwing in the right place at the right time. Listen. In the right hole. Listen, I'm an expert. Mm hmm. This is not feeling good, though. Like, it feels like I'm spinning, and it's making me nervous because that's the longer screw, right? Ooh, wait, wait, oh, yeah, I caught the edge of a third. Uh-oh, are those the same length? Yes, they are. Yes. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Okay. Okay, we know the short one's going You know there. that feeling, guys, when you're like sticking it really deep in the hole and you're like spinning, 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 and you're just not getting anything done, and you're like, this is gonna take forever. That's what she said. It's squeaking. <laughs> 26. It's not even going in the hole. What the heck do I do now? Ooh, 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 ooh. I need some lube. No, I need anti-lube. I need purchase so I can get some friction. It's going though. I feel like maybe. Cause you heard it squeaking before. Yeah. I must've been on the edge of the nutsert. Okay. 
but I can't, it's so hard to tell until you get the final, oh yeah, we're getting some resistance now. Sure, that's, oh, what, yeah. that's what you always say. There we go, there's some resistance. Awesome. Did you put a screw in there? No. Yeah, I did. In the back? Yeah. No. No, I am. Just the one I was working. Okay. By the way, I gotta say, this is like a really well-designed model, and uh, it's, it's kind of crazy to me that we haven't done it before. It's kind of annoying to me because I've been asking to do this one for a long, long, long time. Wait, stop, you're screwing the wrong thing. Oops. You gotta look where you're going. Well, I'm not used to being able to see. And by the way, these could be short. Nope. Are they supposed to nope. be? Nope. All the same. Okay. The 26s and Ooh. then the 16s there to hold it on. And one other thing too, when you guys are screwing into dark, dark, deep places like this, and if you want to make it like way faster, you can use a drill, but Ours I don't recommend it. Downstairs and that's too far That's away. a long ways away. But also I got to say, every one of these uh, screwdrivers that we got from, did Tom send them? No, those are from Rick. From Rick. Okay, yeah. sorry, Rick. Like the Rick that got us the Smokey D's? Mm -hmm. Whoa. That Rick. Rick's our friend. Rick. I'm not gonna say your last name, I almost did. Um, they all have, I thought they had, I thought they had like a, a hexa, hexagonal. No, no, no. On. Those are the red, the Wheelo ones, or Wheo mm, no. ones. I was thinking of, I'm thinking of ones that came from a different manufacturer. But the cool thing is, so check this out, you can take this out and then you can potentially put that into a drill, I think. Because then if you wanted to drill, instead of like sit here and spin 17 threads on each turn. It's not a big deal on the first four, but the second four, by the time you're done, you're just like, I'm feeling kind of raw and worn out. Is, Are we gonna take a I'm not break? alone in this, Are we am gonna I? Take a break. And if you want to. <laughs> oh, that looks so good. Oh my goodness. This is like, what if this was the plane? Like, here it is. It's just a flying wing. Yeah, so it's a drone. Drone. It's hanging. Okay. But now we have to do that again. So are we gonna pause for that part? Because it's like the exact same exact thing. Exact same thing. It's the exact same thing, guys. If you've seen it, it's like anything else in life. If you've done it once, you've done it a thousand <laughs> times. Yeah. Okay, so we got this together and everything went super smooth. <laughs> as you can see, we didn't have any problems at all. But it's together now. Uh, you may notice one difference about this plane that is striking compared to other planes. And that is, I haven't put the props on yet. And that's intentional because if I set up differential thrust, I know that the throttle channel passes through the reflex. And so it's got Megan nervous. And so it's really Blame it on me, right, sure. <laughs> and so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna see if I can get the joiner in there. This thing is gigantic, by the way. Yeah, it, is. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad. It's just that it's gonna get incredibly heavy on one side, so you're gonna have to kind of spot me on this a little bit. Okay. Mm. I know, I know, I feel the same way. I'm just gonna slide this back a little bit. Okay, okay. we should be good now. So I wanna have enough room to lay this wing down, okay? So these two things need to pass through the opening. So this is throttle. And throttle is going to pass into, I believe the square opening here, because this is the wing joiner opening. Okay. And I wanna make sure that these cables aren't gonna get interfered with by um, the wing spar, the wing joiner, however you wanna look at that, okay? So this is what's gonna go out to the receiver. So there's throttle, aileron elevator rudder okay but then on this there's s bus mode or s bus ppm mode and then there's gear then there's flaps so those are all conventional normal setups and then this is throttle and this is throttle so it's just a y cable hun so it's not gonna be too bad so we'll plug one throttle in through the reflex so that we can pass a throttle command that'll be like our master throttle Okay. And then there'll be another throttle on another channel. The only thing I'm debating about is I don't think I want to mess with having AS3X control the throttles. Because if I was going to do that, then I would have to set up a dual rudder configuration and I'd have to do an offset mix on the rudder 
so that if there was this movement, it would go, and I don't know how to do it. It's been so long since I've done it. But if we're doing an 80-20T, there's not AS3X in safe anyway. The reason we're talking about this now is because this wing has to pass through, and I wanna make sure we don't have anything special with these plugs. Right. Okay? So, to answer your question, and not to cut you off, um, I don't know yet. So we're just gonna slide this in because truthfully, it, it doesn't matter because it's gonna be accessible inside the plane. Okay. That's the important part. Okay, so I'm just passing this through. And then these two wires need to pass into this cavity. So if you can, yeah, just help me kind of keep it under control. So normally you would just plug those two throttle lines into the Y cable and it'd be like really easy. But we don't like doing things easy. No. We like doing them extremely the hard way. Yes. You should know. I do know. Okay, down like that. Okay. It's just gonna rest there. Now, let's talk about this for a second. The, the Y cable that you would normally plug this into is gonna be right here, okay? Throw, throw, okay? Now, in my case, I don't think I can reach, so I'm gonna still have to use the Y cable, okay? So if you're doing it by the book, then you'll just plug this in and you'll have throttle on one side, okay? Now, the differential thrust is just gonna require that another channel goes out to the other throttle plug. So we're probably gonna have to take, ooh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. So it doesn't come with this, but we're gonna have to have another straight extension, okay? Right. So let's talk about that for a quick second while we're at the stage of the game. Okay, so I have like, you know, these are ones that we've taken out of the, this would be acceptable, uh, except it's, you know, it's like female to female, so that's not gonna work. Uh, there's an extension, that would work. Okay, so that'll work for one of them. Now you wouldn't have to take out that Y cable, you could just do, but what I'm looking for is just, if I have two of them sitting here, I'll use two straight cables, and then I can save the Y cable for another time when we need a Y cable. Be nice if you had a red, black, and white. Yeah, one. except that I like the, the, the retention that we get from these little clips. Mm -hmm. So that'll be my backup plan though, hon. Okay, so this one's way too long. We don't wanna use that one. And as you can see, I've got lots of cables here, guys. If you don't have lots of cables, don't worry, you'll get there eventually. Same thing, female to female, female to female. Ooh, that's just another Y cable. And the thing is, at the end of the day, we have tons more of these downstairs too. Here's a male to female, that's a weird one. Or excuse me, that's a male to male. Um, so it doesn't look like I have two in that exact configuration the way I want. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do these two, just because they're here and I don't have to go downstairs and look through my bags that are ridiculous. If you think that's ridiculous. yeah. Um, when I first got into the hobby, I bought lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of accessories. I would spend entire weekends looking at all the different websites to order stuff that I didn't need. Yes. I was very, very bad at it. Very bad. Good job. Or very good at it, depending on how you look at it. But that's how I've been able to stay in the air because you need a lot of these weird things like cables and accessories throughout the time that you're in the hobby. So my suggestion is when you're ordering planes and you're getting free shipping and things like that, that's a great time. Um, that is if you're getting free shipping. Some of the companies do free shipping, some don't. Just go ahead and work your orders to where you can get like all those goodies when you're ordering. That's why we always say get the China glue when you're getting an FMS plane. Right, you're already ordering it. You're already ordering. So, okay, so the Y cable that is currently attaching the throttle here which is right here, this is the Y cable. I'm just gonna unplug that Y cable. Now this cable would be fine, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, in this case, I can go ahead and go to the reflex for this. Now if you don't use the reflex at all, like if you just bypass the reflex, the reflex may not arm, okay? Because the reflex is a stabilizer, but it calls for a throttle plug, and I'm not 100% sure that it does it this way, but I believe brown is down, brown is down, okay? That's our extension cord. Now, the only reason you need an extension cord is because it just happens to be too short. We may not even need an extension cord on the other side. We might get it in there and have like an extra four inches of length. I doubt it though, okay? So now this goes into my spare cables for another application, okay? Also, this thing, which is gonna be needed for something else, and I'll show you in a minute. This is gonna be the extension cord that now goes to the other wing. Okay, so we'll lay that out. Okay. This is going to go to your battery. These are going to go to 
your ESCs that are on either wing, okay? Through the I or through the EC5, okay? But in my case, because we're gonna have telemetry on the receiver we picked, I'm gonna be able to tap this easily with that. So I'm gonna leave this dongle out. Okay? Oh, okay, so we're gonna do that, that first. We'll, yeah, we okay. would normally just kinda like do it as we go. But in this case, you can see we do have a little bit more length there, okay? On this, well, it's because it hasn't passed through the fuse yet. Okay, so now this time, we're gonna put this on and you're like, but you haven't screwed the other one on. That is correct. Camera crew is gonna help keep me accountable, mm -hmm. so don't forget. So what I'm doing is I'm just sliding this down I'm getting these wires ready to pass through and then I'm gonna set them into place. And now I can rock this plane back level, okay? Okay, and there's like two key bumps that come out. And camera crew, on that end, I need you to press. Just push straight. Okay, we're good. Now, I should be able to take the plane and flip it over. That is awesome looking, just totally amazing. Cannot wait to get this thing in the air. It's gonna be so cool. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna put this back on, drop it into place. I know we're not done inside there, but I need to be able to flip this. And so I'm gonna hold it so it's level. Mm -hmm. I don't want the wings to slip off. And I'm gonna get my hands right there. Ooh, yeah. awkward. Light. Hey, slide that uh, stand over just toward the edge, please. Like, push it toward me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, how's my tail? Tail is going to touch. Son of a biscuit. Okay, go towards you. You're off now. The Am tail's I good off. on the back? Yeah. Yes. All right. That's, that's where it comes in handy having a second set of hands, guys. It doesn't always... Oh, it is off the, it is off the end. It is now. How? Because you moved it back. I didn't mean to move it back. Well, I meant to do that. There you go. Okay. So now that we have that back in the saddle... I must say, this plane stand has been kind of a lifesaver in certain ways, but it's also annoying in other ways, and that is that the foam is getting not sticky now because it's been around for so long. Okay, so two, mm -hmm. and now four, mm -hmm. and then that gives us an extra mm -hmm. long, extra. 26, and an extra short, 16 millimeter length. Yep. And we'll put those over here by the F-18. So we can take those down to my uh, build a house out of the hardware someday surplus downstairs this plane is sweet and yes that's not too bad to take that wing off for a complex wing yeah with a lot happening in it i have seen so much worse goodness gracious you believe me we have had way worse than that the string of hot glue or something in here i'm just breaking it out right now it's china glue china 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 cheats we're not gonna let him cheat anymore 60 amp ESC, better be 60 amps. Okay, here it goes, guys. So if you're transporting this thing. This is a big plane to transport. But you know what, though? It comes apart pretty easy. It does. Because if you think about it, that's two plugs right there. Yep. And then if you did it right, stand there, please. Son of a biscuit. I don't know why that came off, but it did. Oh, it's just the extension cord. Extension I thought it was my cord. screw fell. Okay, I'm gonna put this back one in first. There, walked it over, and it just went right in. Amazing. Of all the ones that could be terrible, yeah. that is the one that isn't, surprisingly. Oh, I found another flaw with this model. It's very, very minor, though. What? There's a little bit of a scuff on the silver of the engine, simulated engine, on this, what would be the right engine right engine i'll show you in a minute okay we shouldn't need this to be faced upside down anymore except for when i'm doing loops and that's gonna be awesome <laughs> um all right so the next move for us is to and and you guys are probably thinking why are you doing differential thrust you don't need that whatever you guys are like awesome i want to do differential thrust that's the whole reason i watch this video brad oh man this thing is big is big and those guns get in the way when you're handling it so bad yeah. oh it's so annoying i wanted them to be helpful <laughs> to shoot bad guys okay checking the gear door we are going to clear the gear door this has a complex gear system we are absolutely going to be showing it in mere moments clearing here and it mm -hmm. comes forward how's she doing let's check give him a close-up shot of the uh, girl Let's see 
Those her rivets. Curves are not, the rivets are not helping her curves. They aren't. Pressing it down. Ah, oh, see, it's just not staying. I don't understand what we did wrong there. Super disappointing, because that was a cool detail on this plane. Eh. Okay, all right, so we're gonna do like what we do on most planes, and we're going to tip it like this, so we can get closer to it, okay? So now, you can see we have this, and we weren't totally incorrect in our assessment here about this other wire, okay? We have a little bit of length, and to be honest with you, that might not be a terrible spot. We could actually just put the receiver along this wall. Nothing wrong with that. Do you have enough width for your battery? To get in here? Oh, you're going way up there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it should be fine, because then we have enough room. For, like, look where the gear is. There's the gear, there's the throttle. Man, I hate to waste an extension cord for like one quarter inch there. You know what we could do too? If you don't have an extension cord, you could just use the Y cable that came with it, Brian. But just in looking at our surplus here, I don't know, this one's obviously not the right There's, one. Oh, that's not the right one though. That's, yeah, that's fail. So what we'll do is we'll search through this real quick and come right back. Okay, so I got to thinking about this. This is the cable that we pulled off. It says throttle, okay? So you'll notice the red is landed on this and the red is landed on both of those, okay? So my understanding was that when you run, when you run dual ESCs, you have to be a little bit careful about having multiple positives coming back together because you could have like some sort of a disparity in load. I always thought it was stupid because I made an Airbus 380. Do you remember that? And the Airbus A380 had four. And I don't remember if I even separated those ESCs because then you have like one that actually provides the power. Well, in this application, this UBEC is what's providing the power back to the receiver via this cable, okay? So here's my thought, and it's not perfect, but it might work pretty well in this application, okay? This is gonna come back to this Y cable. The Y cable is gonna split, and it's gonna feed back in parallel the power that we need to power the circuit. My only concern is that we, our entire plane's receiver power is dependent on this Y cable, okay? And that makes me somewhat nervous, to say the least. Um, and then that will plug into, on the other side of that, we're going to get power, in this case, from this circuit, which is the throttle circuit for this wing here, okay? So what's gonna happen is we're basically providing BEC level voltage from this circuit and we're receiving BEC voltage, voltage from this circuit that is going to be in parallel with BEC voltage that's on this circuit through throttle, okay? So you can understand what I'm saying. There is plenty of room for complications there because normally you're supposed to just kind of have one that's, that you use, okay? Now, I have never actually had a problem with that, but other people have complained of problems and I don't know if it's because they were inept or if they were just like, you know, literally had a real problem. But my understanding is that just because this provides 10 amps of current, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a deviation in the voltage from this UBAC to the BEC that's in this 60 amp Predator ESC. And this 60 amp Predator ESC, which by the way, we put all four screws in, correct? On mm -hmm. the wings? Okay, good. And we have all four back there. Mm -hmm. This plane is built. That's crazy. This is a complex plane and that went together really easy. Now we've got a weird problem, but this weird problem is only because of my question. Now, admittedly, I'm going to tell you this. Why is, my, why is my concern valid and invalid at the same time? I'm going to tell you why. Because at the end of the day, this thing is producing voltage. That thing is producing voltage. That thing is producing voltage. And my concern is I don't want to make a voltage divider circuit. And if you don't know what that is, you can look it up online. But a voltage divider circuit is basically where you have a resistive element and then you have another resistive element, which would be like a load, okay? And you provide voltage into both load sides. And then outside of it, you know, you, you basically have a larger draw on one side than the other and that creates an imbalance, okay? That's a voltage divider circuit in a nutshell. It's, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but just for simple figuring. My concern is if this is producing five volts and this is producing five volts and this is producing seven, 
then that's a problem because it could create a difference in load. But I don't even know if that's a problem because they didn't seem to think it was a problem since they gave us a Y cable and they were gonna do the exact same thing we were gonna do. The difference here is they were just assuming that I was gonna plug this into one port on my receiver. We've sort of slipped into radio setup. I apologize we didn't announce it, but the radio setup is gonna go like this. You could use an AR620 in this plane and you'd be fine, okay? You got six independent channels. You get a click button, okay? You could do that. It's pretty inexpensive choice uh, given the nature of this, this plane, okay? So that would give you, uh, just in no particular order, throttle, rudder, elevator, ailerons, flaps, gear, retracts, okay? But no mode, okay? So what do you do? You pick whatever, the gear channel, the ailerons, whatever, and you set your mode to the stabilized mode on the reflex. Then you unplug it, the reflex V2, then you unplug it and the flashing lights will constitute, if it's still in the same mode, Okay, whichever one it is, right. you can check. Okay, here's a book, they'll talk about that if you want. Or you can do an SBUS uh, PPM through just one wire. We're gonna use all the wires like this on a regular receiver, okay? This book comes with all the reflexes, okay? Now that being said, if we go up to an, now this is not a full telemetry receiver, but you get a little limited telemetry on this, okay? It's not gonna do you much good, okay? Then you've got this one here, which actually does eight channels, it does full range telemetry, which is why we have two antennas. And we have this little red and black wire with a 1H, a 1S micro pH wire that's gonna feed into that, which says volt, okay? We also have XBUS and then SRXL2. So XBUS, I believe, goes to another bus of different equipment that allows you to do more telemetry things like pitot tubes and stuff like that. I don't know anything about it, so I'm not gonna talk about it. It could also go to a GPS unit. I don't know, that might also, I, I wonder if you could use that for that remote ID module, if you're doing that. Oh. Well, anyway, we're still before it, and it sounds like the idiots at the FAA finally decided they can't actually get it done in time, so thank God for that. Shocking. So they're gonna push it back again. Big surprise, federal government at work. <sighs> anyway, um, so here it is. So we've got this port here, SRXL2. That would be if you were going out to like a quad or something, you wanna go to a flight controller and then you don't wanna have all the little wires. Now, that is not to be confused with SBUS PPM, which is a different protocol for transmission. It is serial communication still, PPM, pulse width modulation, I guess. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but the thing is SRXL2 uses four wires, SRXL used three. Three would have been more consistent with PPM if I understand correct, which I don't. So that's me saying I don't know. Now, if you wanna tear out the reflex, you can go with the 631, you can do your stabilization in AS3X or this, or you can go to an 8360T, which is gonna put you right in the realm of where we're gonna end up. It's gonna be the exact same size. It's gonna be a lot different price though. It's a lot more expensive than this because this has AS3X and safe in it. And we don't need AS3X and safe because we already have the Reflex V2, which is gonna provide for us stabilization. And then if you want, auto leveling. I don't use auto leveling, you can also turn it off. So you can pass everything through and just have it off, that's fine. But if you're gonna pass everything through, you might as well just tear the thing out and just be done with it, in my opinion, because one less thing to fail, okay? Yeah. You could also set up some sort of a panic recovery where it goes to auto leveling if you think you're gonna crash, but my guess is and my experience has been when I need to panic, I tend not to think of the one switch I don't ever, ever, ever hit, okay? And usually it's too quick to matter anyway. Yeah. Now, we've already discussed, we're not doing thrust reverse on these because these Predator ESCs don't, don't support it. So we don't have that option, but if we did have that option, we'd have to be especially careful that the signal that goes out is in time with one another and there's no latency whatsoever. So we would definitely want a Y cable directly to that yellow wire. So if you get this F7F in like two years and it comes with the Predator with the thrust reverse option, guess what? If we go with this 8020T, which is gonna give us telemetry, vario, barometric pressure, all that stuff, uh, altitude, voltage of our pack, which is what we want, the flight pack in this case, then this will be what would be best because you're gonna have all the channels you had before the six, you're gonna have mode, or you could give that up for thrust reverse later once you've set it to the you know, stabilized mode. That's where you're gonna be flying. Most people are gonna fly there all the time. They're gonna live in that mode. They're never gonna take it out of that mode. 
Beginners are not gonna be flying this plane, let's be honest. If you're a beginner and you're flying this plane, you're a crazy person. You're just looking for a quick way out of the hobby. Don't buy this plane first. You're gonna crash it immediately, and then you're gonna be like, why did you tell me to buy that, Brian? Because you said how beautiful and gorgeous and easy it was to build. Well, you can follow my build, build video. You can build the thing. You can have it ready to rock. You can have it sit there over in the corner and just stare at you every time you walk through the room and say, why aren't you flying me? Why are you neglecting me? And you can be, because I don't know how to fly you yet. I'm still working on the Ranger. Seriously, that's what, that's what I would seriously tell you, okay? Um, and there's a button for buying, same thing. There's also a buying plug on this one. And uh, you can use a buying plug on this one too. So that's a good place to power it if you want. Okay, so in our case, we needed that little extra length of wire. And so we used a Y cable. Now we don't need to use that plug. Oh, and by the way, you can do SRXL2 out of that as well. Which again, I don't really play with that, but you could technically. So we could plug in the wire and see if we pass all the channels, but I don't think we will. So that being said, we have two additional channels, one of which is gonna be mode, one of which is going to be what? Our other throttle channel. There you go, ding, ding, ding. Okay, so when you feed any wires into the plus and minus that have energy or power or electricity, what's gonna happen? It's parallel all the way across the pin set. And the only thing that really deviates is the signal pin, the top pin, okay? So in this case, that means that we'll be able to do all the channels we need, which is elevator, rudder, throttle one, flaps, gear, and gear door. That's all together because the sequencer handles it. Then we're gonna have uh, auto leveling, stabilization or off for the reflex, which would be mode. And then we're gonna have throttle number two, okay? But that's gonna be, right? I thought we were using all eight. You did those in a weird order. I know I did, sorry. That's five, six, seven. Yeah, we are using eight. So I must have forgot like elevator or something. Anyway, we know we're using all six here. So we're gonna use six plus two more. Yeah. Okay, so that's gonna give us mode and it's gonna give us the differential thrust channel. Now you could give up the differential thrust if you wanted to throw reversing on there at some point. Or if you decide to go to avian, then you can actually ride one of the unpluggable channels they go up higher, closer to 10. In our case, we're limited to 10 because we're using an NX10. Mm -hmm. And you would be able to use a master gain and mode above the pluggables, which means you then save another channel. Not that you would need it. If you're using Avian, I believe you can go up even higher if you have more channels. Or you could just use that same mode, okay? Hopefully that all makes sense. I don't want to talk over your head. If this is over your head, this plane might be a little bit over your head right now because we've done this a million times. It's pretty easy for us. My only question and lingering question at that is, are we going to cause any sort of voltage issues? So my answer to that question is this. I'm going to pull out a tool that I never pull out on this channel. And it's one of my favorite tools to use. I'm just kidding, it's not. This is the crappiest tool I have in my drawer. <laughs> I have like nicer digital multimeters, don't worry. But I'm just gonna test the voltage. I'm gonna grab one of these two batteries, okay? There's nothing wrong with just grabbing the battery and sticking it in the hole. But the thing is, I wanna make sure I do this while they're separate, okay? So I'm not so much concerned about the, the BECs on the ESCs yet. I'm concerned about this. I wanna see what it's set to because you can change the settings as per page 22 in the manual on what your BEC voltage would be, I believe on Predator ESC. So let's double check that quick. So on page 21, 22, so there's a low voltage protection th threshold. Okay, the battery type, breaking on off, restore factory default. Looks like low voltage thresholds three. Okay, so do we have, I don't know. If they don't let us play with the voltage, there's a good chance it's not gonna be different. Switching, use your new ESC. I don't see anything for voltage setting. So the ESC is gonna put out what the ESC is gonna put out. Okay, so in that case, that means when I plug this battery in, this BEC is going to give us some juice. So we're gonna see what that juice is. This doesn't need to be controlled by anything. Okay, see it's got a red light on. Okay, so now this BEC is going to manipulate the voltage through a bridge rectifier or something like that. 
And we're gonna go into DC volts in the 20 volt range, which is set here, 20 volts. And then I'm gonna test this. So you like that lead? It's super nice. I literally have more of these. Please don't hold me any, don't give me any shame for it. Oh, dang it. Oh, there we go. I can just touch the top. Now I don't wanna to touch these together, obviously, so I'm gonna get this secured first. Okay, so there's one lead and here's the other. Look at the voltage on the monitor there, camera crew. Mm -hmm. So 5.3 volts at 10 amps. That's 50 watts, that's a lot, okay? That's a lot of power. I believe Now, that. at 10 amps. So here's the trick of the day, guys. So we're at a 5.5 volt BEC output. Now, I wanna see what happens when we plug this SOB in, okay? And when we plug this SOB in, it's going to tell us what we're going to get. And so I need to use my little Y cable here. This will be my little adapter for the moment. And you're probably thinking, goodness gracious, Brian, you're always teaching us random things that I didn't want to know about. Mm -hmm. Buy a farm and you'll always do that. <laughs> That's what we've been learning ever since we built this house here. We have been working like crazy to learn millions of stupid things that we never wanted to know ever. Mm -hmm. It's not, I mean, not, they're not all stupid. I shouldn't say it that way. That sounds much more negative. But the truth is, like, most of it we didn't want to know. Well, what I told you the other day is everything I do, I only do once. So I have to learn all of this random stuff to do one, one project. And then, like... Yeah, like when we bought our hay baler. And yeah. then we <sighs> bailed our hay, and I had to fix that thing, like, 14 times this last... It was terrible. Or, like, building a pond. I don't need and to read the Waters of the U.S. documents again. Ever no, because life. you are now going to know better than to ever want to build a pond yes. again. <laughs> and, you know, dealing with engineers and stuff like that. I mean, that's what they do all day. Of course, I do weird stuff all the time, too. And I do one-off projects. It's one of my favorite things in my career. Okay. So I'm going to plug this in. This is going to now provide power through where? It's going to actually energize the whole model. But the thing is, then I can test my throttle line from this side which is here, okay? That's where we're gonna test it, okay? <whistles> Gotta make sure my gear don't open real quick. Good, they're not opening. Okay, so we're fine. We have no receiver attached. Remember that, guys. We also have to do our shelf liner. Super technical step. Okay. Okay, so going to DC volts again in the 20 volt range. Why 20 volts, camera crew? I have no idea. Because that shows you the decimals of resolution. If you went to 200 volts, then you could see it in whole numbers. I'm gonna go to 20 though. Okay. Okay. So now we already know that's going to give us 5.5 volts, but now we can test off of this thing. Oh, son of a biscuit lover. There we go. Now I want to go across these carefully. Okay. So I'm touching my red to the copper in the center. You see how I'm doing that? If it was a sharp and pointy, it'd be a lot easier. Okay. Now I don't want to short this out. So I'm just going to be careful. No, you need to look at the thing. Look at the voltage on the screen there, camera crew. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's so hard to get contact with this crappy tip. Son of a Blizzcat lover. They're beeping away, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Trying again. If at first you fail, try, try, try again until you fail ultimately by crashing. Look at the voltage, please. Mm -hmm. What do you got? Zero. Still zero? Still zero. Seriously? Seriously. Are you serious, Law? Yep. Huh. Oh, you know why? Because look, it's not attached to anything. Duh. We got to go to the other side. Wait. Yeah, we are. Mm. That BEC is powered through this thing. That should be producing juice. Why is it not? Is the Y cable bad? Let's find out right now. Okay, same test, different spot. Goodness gracious, if I just had a pin that was, if I didn't have a broken red line, this would be a lot easier, okay. Okay, you guys see what I'm doing there? Zero. Are you kidding? I'm not. Are you serious, Lock kidding? Negative zero, zero. <sighs> that is so strange, guys. Okay, we'll pause, I'll be right back. Okay, so this is off the BEC. See, 5.5 volts, okay? Now, I'm gonna go out of the one out of the wing, right here. Same exact thing should be true. 
going across the positive line, which is the middle line, okay? The red wire. Okay, pressing down gently to make contact, okay? There is no power there, nothing, okay? Mm -hmm. That's so weird, that means like, okay, so did they shut off the power source from that ESC? I don't know, if they did, that would explain some things. Now, I'm gonna test the one from the other wing, okay? So this one goes through a Y cable, which is now an extension cord, okay? Of course, it immediately slipped down to where I can't get to it. Okay, guys, this is the one that comes out of the wing. It says throttle here. Oh, for goodness sakes. It's really short. Yeah, that's what she said, definitely. Okay, so guys, I'm flipping this over. It could be that they're not armed, but there would still be power to run your receiver at this point. Okay, I'm gonna go reverse polarity this time just for to complicate things. What do you see? Zero. Zero, zero. That so, is so weird. Zero. So that means they either shut off the BEC or there is no BEC on these Predator ESCs. That answers our question, folks. I hate to make it so complicated because I don't mean to, um, but at the end of the day, if I know that there's no voltage being produced by BECs and these wing-mounted ESCs, I don't have to worry about interference between three different voltage levels, okay? And so we won't have an argument between the two devices, okay? That's why we brought out this amazing tool. And it also does really seriously make me wonder about that BEC. It just makes me wonder. Wonder. It makes wonder me wonder, why. like, why did they do that? Because they knew we were going to be having two? Or did they actually literally get a Predator ESC that has no BEC? Because they are sort of unusual to not have an ESC. It is, really, seriously. I believe you. So I can't reach, oh, it's so close. Wasting an extension cord, I feel like. Okay, brown is down. So brown is down, so now brown is gonna go back to the reflex, and you're gonna notice something. You guys see the reflex? Here's the other telltale sign that we're getting no power, and it's not just because I use a digital multimeter. There's no lights on. And I have that thing plugged into this reflex through the throttle channel. Oh. Okay, so now that leads me to the next question, which is how are we going to power this thing? Because this thing needs to power the receiver too. And this is the answer. I already know the answer to the question. I'm just saying it out loud to teach you guys something if you don't know about electronics. Okay, how are we going to do that camera crew? You remember that Y cable we had? That fancy dance Y cable? Yeah. That was previously used for lights. Well, guess what's going to happen now? Now we're gonna come in here and we're gonna plug this in either this way. So the brown is down, black is down. Okay, so look at that. So now when we plug this in to this BEC that doesn't exist, it doesn't have a BEC, so it doesn't matter, it doesn't hurt anything. Now, smoke should not fly. Flames and destruction will not happen. But what will happen? This will plug into channel eight or whatever channel we use for our spare channel. And guess what that's gonna do? That's gonna energize our receiver and then everything is gonna back feed from the rest of the wires to the reflex. Yeah. I thought you would understand. I trust you. <laughs> okay, so looking at this, these are the ones that are gonna go to the receiver and then there's a gear and a flap that are gonna go directly to the receiver in addition to this now Y cable, okay? And then this is gonna get tucked in somewhere where it's away from wires just so that it doesn't end up melting them or doing something crazy like that. And I'm trying to untangle, this is a little bit of cable management 101, okay? So these wires are now gonna be close together. So the flap gear and second motor are going to be prepared to be plugged in now. Look at that, fancy dance. Okay. Okay, and then the rest of the crap is over here. Oh, we also need to put some shelf liner on this little chunk of Velcro or hook and loop so that it can sit in here and prevent our batteries from slipping. Although I gotta say, this battery's probably gonna go pretty much right there and nowhere else. Probably. Oh. My mic is gonna die. Some of my snarky commentary is gonna go away soon. That would be terrible. It would be. 
oh, I know, but I want to fly this today. We're so close. We're going to do it, aren't we? That's hilarious. We are. We seriously are. And it's calm out. Uh, I know. But the battery's probably not, like my phone isn't going to last. Well, let's just see how far we can get. That's fine. Okay? Because honestly, that. this this radio setup is not going to be as bad as some. Okay? I'm going to scooch this back. I know we just did some testing that's unusual, but it's not going to take that long to set up the profile for this. So come on around, camera crew. Let's do the rest of this. We just can't have any more interruptions. What? Like the package delivery? Yeah. From Sam's? Yeah. From the person that was in an unmarked car like usual? Those make me feel super comfortable. Why are you unplugging that? Because um, it's going to be easier to land the wires for oh, the that's receiver. Right. That's right. Cause we already did. Okay, folks. Here goes nothing. The radio setup, actually, now that we have answers and we've acted upon good information that we confirmed ourselves, we used the uh, needle nose pliers to fold this. And then we're just going to pull that right out. Drop this receiver out. These antenna are always taped in there, goofy. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this and we're going to say, okay, where the heck is everything going to plug in? Well, there's eight of these plugs and then there's this one. That's for binding. We're not going to use that. But we could plug the power in there, except we're not going to plug the power in there because it's going in wherever the, the second, throttle, second yep. throttle channel goes. Okay, but what's this thing going to do? I'm not figuring it out. I'm confirming it. Or you're figuring I'm it out. I'm figuring it out. I was going to say. You think I know this? Yeah, you pretty much do. Okay, so this is this is not neat. It's going to tangle. It's going to look like crap in there. And it's going to be potentially dangerous. Dangerously tangled. So now I have to do this. I have to spin this thing. And this is what I do every time I do a plane with one of these receivers. I just go down the length and I just twist it like this. And it seems like such a huge waste of time until you get it into that mess up there. And then you're like, oh, it does kind of make sense now that you've done that. Okay, so you can see I haven't twisted it very tight, but you don't have to have it tight at first. You do it tight on the second run, it goes a little quicker and easier. And you can also put this in a drill and you can bite the con connector very carefully with your chuck. And then you can actually spin this in the drill and it's the quickest way to do it. We don't ever do that though, because that would require going and getting the drill. Mm -hmm. Correct? From downstairs. Mm -hmm. It's a long ways away. Okay, so I usually like to go a little bit more than that. I'm trying not to rush this build because this has been a relatively easy build. It's just um, quite a few steps. Not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Okay, very nice. Okay, now it holds its shape. All right, so what are we gonna do with these? There's three different ways you can do this. Well, there's more than three, but there's three main ways. You could Take apart this connector, rebuild it, and then you could solder these on. That's a huge waste of time. Definitely not that way. Definitely not that way. You could open up this stuff and try to solder in there and potentially compromise all this crap and then have nothing to go back to the factory with. So definitely not, not that, that way. way. Also, this taps the main power side. So you can actually tap this line. But remember, if this fails, your plane crashes 100% certain. If this fails, you're not gonna fail because of this, okay? So if you're gonna tap a wire, I would suggest tapping this side, okay? Okay. Why? Because there is more wire per unit of wire, okay, by, by size. This is smaller. If you make a mistake, it's gonna be a bigger yeah, proportional less. mistake, yeah. okay? Don't tap this side, because that's only gonna give you pack, not pack voltage, but that's gonna give you your BC voltage, which you already have on another telemetry screen if I remember right, okay? And you would have that even on 620, I think. Okay, so that's nice and twisted and looks good and it's gonna work. And now we just need an amazing tool. Now you don't have to use a toothpick to do this anymore because we came up with a better tool. <laughs> and the better tool is now this tiny teeny little Allen. It's a 0.7 millimeter size. And this seems to work really nicely for this, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pierce this and then I'm going to massage it through the cable, which is a braided cable after all. Okay. And then I'm going to take the red wire. I'm going to walk this down the length. This is always done inside the plane where it's super awkward and uncomfortable. But in this case, 
I get to do it out here where it's very easy and I can't quite see the penetration points. So I'm gonna do that one more time and just kind of open it up just a hair more. And yes, oh yeah, that's a nice place to stick it. And then I'm gonna stick it as far as I can stick it. And you see when you've got room and lighting, you can stick that SOB right in the middle. It's actually AWG, sorry. I know I was gonna mix that up somehow. So we're doing this and then I'm gonna go ahead and just make a small pocket, okay? And I'm sorry, the black on black really makes it disappear. There you go. That doesn't really help, but a little no, bit. No, it kind of does actually, Probably thank you. at least. Okay, so now, remember, this is gonna go back inboard to the plane and then this will come back and, you know, honestly, probably chase along this to here, okay? So now we okay. can tape those on and we can remove some of the mechanical likelihood of that breaking free and separating from the plane. Where the heck did we put the scissors? I know we got them somewhere around here. I know we were literally using them. They, they haven't be. disappeared. Where are All right, so we just have run of the mill tape, nothing special really about it. Now, if you really wanna make this as strong as possible, you can throw some zip ties, you can do whatever you want. You can also cut this whole thing and solder it right to the wire. But I have found that this, remember, this carries very little current, it's just a test level, okay? Because there's no load on this side. The load is the electronic control circuit, okay? So the, remember, you're not powering this, you're powering the telemetry receiver inside of here, okay? So you're literally just applying voltage in parallel for that. Now I can pull this tight. When it's out like this, I can really get a good mechanical connection with this tape, okay? Now when it's inside of the cavity of the plane, like on that, did we do it on the F-18? Yes. Oh, good Lord, it was terrible. Because it's the world's shortest, shortest battery lead ever. ever. And I think we discussed that as how not to do it. Yeah. But that's why we're so thrilled when we get into a model where FMS has done a great job in pretty much every aspect of the model, this has been great except for the decals. The decals were like way harder to make look nice. And honestly, they might look fine after they dry, but I kind of doubt they're gonna look that good. Okay, so pressing that down, pulling this sort of tight on the first round, can't get too tight. Now I can pull it really tight and that's where you're gonna get your mechanical strength from that connection, okay? and just stretching it. I don't want so much in there though, so you'll notice I didn't do a crazy a lot of it, okay? Now, if you're still in any doubt about the strength and integrity of that connection, then you would wanna reinforce it with maybe like a zip tie or something, just to support that connection so that it can't come loose. You see what I've done there? I did a double back, and then you could, you could zip tie that to itself if you're really concerned. But in my case, I just wanna leave it the way it is, okay? Then when this gets past, let's say here, I'm gonna take this and make a bend so that I'm not putting a lot of pressure on these soldered joints that when they get hot in a moment of duress, you don't want them to get pulled out by mechanical energy that is stored up because you have them basically sprung, okay? That's why I'm doing what I'm doing, okay? Then I'm gonna just wrap this. It's not, it's, I'm not, I'm not trying to induce eddy currents. I'm not trying to cause some sort of interference. This is literally a test patch cable for like a low voltage circuit. It's not that big a deal. And this is also basically not that big a deal. It's just a small little bridge rectifier. It's not a big deal. I'm not worried about it. It's got a small little heat sink on it. It's not complex, okay? It's got a little voltage regulator, big whoop. Okay, so it's a simple device is what I'm getting at. And then you don't wanna pass a bunch of RF through your crap, and so that's why they have this ferrite core. It's a huge waste of space and weight, if you ask me. But I'll go ahead and take advantage of it if I can get these wires pulled to the side like that. And then I'll just go ahead and ferrite core my wire as well. <sighs> ferrite cores are supposed to help to uninduce the eddy currents or reduce the propensity to, to encourage eddy currents. I just think it's overkill, it's so stupid. Probably some stupid FCC rule because some bureaucrat somewhere wanted to make an extra 30 cents a year times 4,700 shares every second of the day or whatever. I don't know. So we're just going to stick this back there. See, we can't fit it. It's, it's so full. 
Okay, I'm gonna go like that. You see how I moved it? I can pass this back through. Guys, you get all sorts of education today. That's what we're here for. That's what we do on this channel. Strictly educational. I'm not trying to ever sell any airplanes, YouTube. Although we do make commissions when we sell them. Mm -hmm. But that's just incidental. It's just a part of the fun. Okay, see this, guys? Beautiful, right? Amazing. Okay. And by the way, if you want to help support Brian Phillips RC, one of the best ways you can do it is by literally buying airplanes, quads, helicopters, remote ID modules, whatever it happens to be that you need today. You can buy it from the links that we have in our video description below or brianphillipsrc.com, which is our website, our website that's controlled and commanded by yours truly and the camera crew does most of the work on. And then I sometimes criticize it and then get in trouble. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, so I'm plugging this in. That's gonna feed back our voltage to the telemetry device, which in this case is inside of the receiver. And I don't wanna yank out the wires from the micro pH, so I wanna make sure to relieve the pressure. And then there's gonna be a Y cable that's also associated to this. But as you can see, we have this nice little module now, okay? So this module is also gonna to need to be stuck down into the plane somewhere. This is where I stabbed myself the other day when we were building that F-18. Hey, look! Oh, wow, would you look at that? I have some shelf liner that's not the right size. But this actually doesn't technically need to be stuck down. Oh, you're right. Of course I am. You're right, and you know what? Because it's not spatially aware. Why is it not spatially aware, camera crew? Because it doesn't have AS3X and safe. It's not our stabilizer. That's true, but in that case, I mean, I'm gonna- You can still stick it so that it doesn't like flop around, but doesn't need to be. That is one thing that worries you, I know. I don't want it flopping around in there. <laughs> okay, so is your mic dead? No, thank you. They still got they that. Heard that. Yeah, okay. they got that. <laughs> it's just dying. We didn't lose it. No, that'd be terrible. Um, okay, so we have some Velcro from previous builds. And in that case, because this is not spatially aware, I'm not super concerned but it is kind of nice if you have Velcro, you can take these things out to inspect or change things slightly. And one thing I could envision changing on this plane at some point, if we ever did, would be changing this to an AS3X equipped receiver, okay? Rather than the reflex, okay? I'm not saying we're planning on that. There's no reason why we would do that unless we have some sort of an issue with the way the reflex works. Maybe it's not enough to stabilize it and make it work well. And while we're using scissors, why don't we go ahead and cut some shelf liner? Guys, okay, shelf liner is used to help keep our battery in place. And if it seems like I'm jumping around, it's because this is pretty much how it goes when you build planes. Because you're like, a squirrel. You don't need this anymore, right? Mm, no, we? squirrel. Sure, we don't have a lot of those out here. It's weird, we have all these trees around here and I'm telling you the squirrels are like master squirrels though. Yeah. They jump from the tops of the trees to the next tree and they don't even mess around. They don't, they don't even go to the ground. They don't come up to the deck or anything because they have enough out in the timber. And yeah. we also have like foxes and things they that eat them. Eat squirrels. But that's why I'm saying the squirrels are like master squirrels. Yeah. They're like huge monsters, monster squirrels. There you go. Okay, so I'm just gonna do something like that. It's a little bit oversized on this one. That's intentional. Ooh, I yeah, overcut that. that I did that. I did that oversized on purpose, and here's why. So shelf liner is very simple. It goes in shelves and it stops your crap from sliding around. See how easy this slides? Now imagine, well, of course, now I've got it on top of the surface. See, it won't hardly slide. You can still do it. It's not like you can't. It's just not easy, okay? Now I'm going to take off the backing on this when we're ready. Right. Okay. Because we'll probably plug in first, right? Yeah, we got to plug in stuff first. Okay. So now you're probably thinking to yourself, but Brian, how do you know where to plug all that crap in? And that is a great question. And we'll be addressing it in the next part of this video, which is going to be where I plug everything in. And in the meantime, I'm going to plug in the throttles, the things I know about. So here's the throttle. It doesn't matter which one's which. This is just power. Okay. Power is not the same as control and control is not the same as power. Okay. So these things are gonna go up like this. And then this is going to be one little group that plugs in. And then this is going to plug in here 
or directly to the receiver probably on the programming port, which is the bind plug, okay? If we decided to do that. We're not doing that yet though because we have to do a profile in our radio system first to tell us where everything plugs in so we can do it right. Okay, so now everything is plugged in there. Now the next move is you see how it's a big mess of wire. It's gonna be not a very big mess in a few minutes. It's gonna be actually quite neat for being a complex plane. Okay, remember this amazing little doohickey? Mm -hmm. Watch this, I'm gonna stick this right there where the sun don't shine. Nice high quality strap here. I'm gonna actually loosen that so it's just barely attached, okay? And then this is the battery. I mean, shoot, we might as well stick it in there. Might as well. We're gonna have to do some different testing on stuff, but we are gonna have pack voltage, which is pretty dang nice, which avoids having to have a voltage alarm in there, okay? Yeah. So everybody, don't get overwhelmed with the detail. I'm trying to teach you stuff. I hope you are learning stuff. And if you are learning stuff, leave it in the comments below. We like to know if things are working or if we should adjust the way we're trying to do things on Brian Phillips RC. We try to be responsive to our audience because our audience literally and figuratively pays the bill, even though Google technically pays the bill and they just steal their share first before we see any of it. Right. And that's the way it is when you run a YouTube channel. You gotta bow to the mothership, also known as Google, YouTube. There's a bug. Okay, all right, so radio setup, the part you guys have been promised for a long time, pressing the power button, okay? I still have my four steps in case we need them. Okay, EC1500, back and cancel, scroll all the way to the bottom, add new model, click, create. This takes a second, while it takes a second, you can look at the screen, I'll keep jabbering, I'm putting away my tools that I don't need. So yeah, speaking of the mothership, if you guys follow the links in the video description below, which really irritates Google, they think we're trying to get you to navigate away from our videos, okay? We don't understand why this is the case because we literally have a website that dedicates itself to trying to get you to go watch our videos. <laughs> so Google, YouTube, stop being so greedy and help us provide another 55 million views in the next nine years, okay? All right, here it is. All right, model select we just did, model type. That's acro, if you change this, it'll reset everything. Model name, this is where we're gonna type it. 177 is not true, by the way, there's actually quite a few above that from a previous radio. Okay, we're gonna type in F7F and come right back. All right, so we got FMS, F7F, Tiger Cat, 1.7, ran out of spaces, good enough. Aircraft type, this is a normal wing with one flap. The tail type, I'm gonna set as normal, but if you really want to designate and try to have AS3X control one of the props for, or not AS3X in this case, but if you wanna to try to have, um, that's right, we don't have AS3X in this. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. So right? it doesn't matter. So it's basically normal, okay? Whoops. But you can do a dual tail, a dual, like that, and you can have dual rudders. So if your AS3X is being commanded through your receiver, whereas ours is being commanded through the reflex, then that's the way that you can actually make the throttle act on both channels, okay? With differential thrust, okay? Through AS3X, right? Now, I'm gonna just do normal, and that's because we're using a reflex, okay? Oop, aircraft type, sorry guys. Select image, standard file. Do we have anything, oh, there's a twin at least. That's probably about as close as they're gonna get. Yeah, probably so. Okay, flight mode set up. We don't have to do flight modes on this, uh, but we can do flight mode. So let's talk about switches for a second. This is throttle cut. This would be thrust reverse if we had it. This will be our dual rates and expo. This will be our master gain if we had it, which we don't. This is not used. This is used for AS3X off and safe. This is used for retracts. This is used for flaps and this is unused. Mm -hmm. Ironically, I use this because this is for occasional weird things. I don't want to set it to the gear because I need gear, so it's going to be the D switch. So if we set a flight mode, which we don't have to on this plane, right? but if we set it to D switch, guess what we can do? Then we can go out to spoken flight mode and we can make a label for what's happening. But remember, we have to make sure that this is correct. It's just a label, okay? So cancel, cancel, and this is going to be... This is gonna be stabilizer, so I'm just gonna lie and say AS3X, and we'll come right back. 
Now, why did, you, why did I do AS3X? Because that's what I'm used to. There is actually different callouts for like stabilizer or stabilized like this. It says gyro, okay? You could say that, okay? But in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down here and just show you the AS3X. I'm gonna know exactly what that means right away because I'm kind of a, and then save for the other one, okay? So AS3X. Then if I go to this one, I can have cancel, cancel. I can do off, O-F-F. -F. Okay, so off, and then I'm gonna scroll down. Off is like most of the way down, so we'll be right back. Okay, off. Okay, so ASRX off, and then this one is gonna be auto leveling. So, oops. So I'm gonna just lie and say safe. Why am I gonna say safe? Because that's sensor assisted flight envelope, which is auto leveling on the spectrum stuff, which is what I'm used to, and I'm a spectrum Horizon Hobby fanboy. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows that. All right, well, scrolling down. What? You're trying to be as consistent as you can be with everything, so. Yeah, it's just really hard just, to communicate it other ways because like I could have gyro on, like gyro. And I think there is one that says like stabilizer on or stabilized mode or something. Yeah, but it's always like ambiguous and then yeah. there's not like an off for that. It's like stabilization mode. But is that stabilized or is that auto leveling? So that's why it's always confusing. Yeah, and then there's like agility and indoor mode and stability, high low angle. What is that crap? I don't even know what that means. I just wanted to say bombs away. All the time. Okay. So now channel assign, we aren't gonna mess with except for B on aux two. We don't want that association, okay? You wanna know why? And we don't want that association this time either. And here's why, because we're gonna have one of those. Um, we could make an association right now. And let's look at our channels up here real quick. We've got obviously channel eight would be the top. So if we have channel eight, we could call that our other throttle or we could call channel seven our throttle. But then, yeah, I just wanna make sure we do this right. Let's do flaps are gonna be on aux one already. Mm -hmm. Gear's gonna be on A. Then let's do aux two for switch D. Not that it matters. And then aux three. Well, except do I want that wire hanging out there on its own or do I want an inboard one? I no, we need mode, we need mode. So it's gonna be there. So there's still gonna be something plugged in. Yeah. So that's gonna be D. And then this one, aux, aux three, is just gonna be aux three. That's gonna be the other throttle then, right? Right. Which, actually, I don't even think you need to assign it to anything. We just make it inhibited. Okay. Cause it's not attached to a switch, okay? Right. Cause like, we're not gonna attach it to the throttle cause we're gonna make a mix. And the mix is gonna then apply to aux three. Okay. Okay, so walking out, Walking out. Okay, now first thing we have to do is we have to set up um, throttle cut, obviously. So throttle cut's gonna be on switch H and we have to make sure, whoops, switch H, not I. Switch H, okay. You can see it's working currently because it's at throttles at zero. Okay, now switch H. Now, what we need to do is we need to also be careful about aux three, okay. So we have to do another mix right now and we have to tie normal and this is gonna be throttle to aux three. And that's gonna be at a rate of 100 to 100. Okay, 100 up, 100 down. See how it's going down now? So what that means is as I move the stick Okay, as I move the stick, it's gonna go up and down, but it goes up and down even when my throttle holds on or throttle cuts on. So what do we do? We take and we go switch H. So only when switch H is in this condition, otherwise we have another mix, okay? So that goes up, that goes down. And then it's stuck at 50, which you don't want that. So you want in this condition, ah, dang it. That's not what I meant to do. On uh, this condition, you want, with that, you just want the offset to be down. 
And I think we can just clear that and clear that. Nope. See what's going on? I just want to make sure it's locked all the way down no matter what you do with your stick, okay? So now if I move the stick, see it goes to 50%, so that's not okay. And I don't, I don't think I want the offset. See how it just stays down? I always want it to be down no matter what you do because this is the safety feature, okay? So now that that's off, we don't want that mix. So now it works. When the throttle's on, it's working opposite right now. You know what? I'll get this and come right back. Okay, so sorry guys. In mixing, I set up a different mix. This is just the throttle cut part, okay? So we have throttles down, throttle cuts on. If I move the stick, nothing happens on throttle and nothing happens on aux three, okay? H is attached to switch uh, auxiliary three at a rate of zero on this and a hundred on that. And that locks it down. So you remember aux three was at 50% by default. It's like, we're not 50%, but zero. This is plus 100. That's minus 100. You don't want that. Cause that means half throttle. Okay. So when this throttle cut is off, it's still at minus 100. So that's our starting point. Okay. Then our, so you guys saw what happened. I have switch H on or off because it switches the direction that we're tying it up or down. That keeps it at minus 100 to start, okay? See that? So throttle cut is basically throttle cut, or even now, it's still throttle cut. So we're gonna change that then, so that in this condition, we're gonna have uh, throttle is true to auxiliary three at a certain rate, and I don't know what that rate's gonna be, and I think it's probably 100 and 100 right now. It's just been so long since I've actually done this. See how it's going way down? That could be a problem. We'll address that a little later. Okay. So throttle goes up, throttle goes down. So you can see it's moving aux three, so that's not acceptable. So I only want that to be true when switch H is down here, okay? So when switch H is up here, I don't want the mix to be active. I only want it active when switch is in that condition, the out of throttle cut, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's only gonna be true when we're out of throttle cut and then I want it to be, when we move it up, I want it to move up. Okay, so there we go. So that unlocks our throttle, but only on half of the sequence, okay? That's the, that's, so it's moving it up to 50 now. We don't want that. Now I have to do an offset. See, as I do this, it's going up to 100. We want it to get to the same number. In this case, it says 96, but I'm just going to set it to 100. Okay. So there you go. So 96 all the way down to minus 98. Minus plus 96, minus 98. Okay. Now when I flip the switch, there's no mix. So we have a safe split control of throttle, okay? Okay, 15%. So what that means is now we also have to set up dual rates and expo like always. So we're gonna do that real quick. So for ailerons, we're gonna set it to switch F. This is always the same on every plane. We almost never have to play with it after the fact. Sometimes I forget to set it up and we do it in our maiden flight. So we have our middle point. If we need more, we've got more. If we need less, we've got less. We get to the ground. If that becomes, if that's the way we liked it, we make that the new middle. If this is the way we liked it, we make that the new middle. Then we double and half the same setting, okay? And you can do that for each of the three on separate switches if you wanna waste a bunch of switches, but I've just found that it's enough going on when you're flying to be switching three or four or five switches. I could barely get down to switch to see my voltage on the screen, okay? Let alone be doing all that fancy stuff. If you have a helper, sometimes you get in the menus and make changes while you're flying, but it's not really a great idea. Set them to your trimmers if you really need to. Your trimmers are here and here. Okay, so now we have all three set up the same way. Throttle cut's already been set. Very important on a twin with differential thrust, okay? Very important. Oh, and then also flap system. 
we don't really want to set it up yet, but we're just going to get this here because we don't know where we want to be yet. We're going to set one to like minus 50 and then one to plus 50. Okay. Now, why do we do that? Because I don't want to overdrive the servos for the flaps and I don't want to set my elevator correction. So I'm going to set this to two seconds. Okay. And then that elevator correction will be set once we get done setting the inboard flaps. Okay. Now also we just want to double check our knobs not changing. We want to look at aux three. Aux three is the danger zone. Okay. Nothing's changing aux three except for throttle cuts on. Nothing changes it. Now that changes it. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that 2% difference can be calibrated out by calibrating the throttle range. I'm not going to do that. Okay, so then there's one other mix we have to do, and that's going to be for the rudder. Okay, so normal, this is going to be rudder to throttle. And I don't remember how I do this. It's been so long since I've done it. But this is going to be the same thing. We only want so much of it to work, but I'm just going to set it to a big number so we can see it move back and forth. And then we'll apply it to both. Okay. So rudder moving, yeah, throttle cut is on, throttle cuts off. Now what happens is the throttle goes up and the throttle goes down and the throttle goes up and the throttle goes down, but it stays at minus 98, okay? Goes up, goes down, okay? Now what we can do is we can make that same mix for aux three, normal, but we want it to be reflective of throttle, excuse me, we want rudder. Where is rudder? Rudder to impact aux three now. And aux three is gonna be at a rate of, we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna have it shut off when we're in the throttle cut mode, okay? So this might be too much. We can change this number from 100 down to like 20 or something later, okay? And we're gonna make this switch only active in this condition, okay? and not active in that condition, okay? okay? So now when I move my stick, you'll see aux moves, 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 okay? So rudder moves that and throttle cuts, ooh, we, we don't want that to be moving right now. We want it to be like moving there and not here. See what I'm saying? So I have to, ah, dang it, I have to reset this one, guys. I apologize. When you screw up a mix, you have to reset them sometimes. It's just easier to start from scratch. So what are we doing? We're doing uh, rudder. Where is rudder? Where are you, rudder? There you are, rudder to aux three. With a rate of 100 and 100. So we'll set your switches before you do Oh, that. yes, thank you. Ah, dang it. Sorry, guys. You're right, camera crew, thank you. You do set your switch first. I don't know why it's at the bottom for that reason. Okay, so switch H. When switch H is down here, I want it to act. When switch H is up here, I want it not to act, okay? So this mix will only be active in that condition, okay? And the rate will be 100 and 100. And this is, you have to know what you're doing on thrust reverse or uh, differential thrust because you can cut yourself really easy. And we're gonna test this without props on guys, don't worry. Okay, so we're at 100 and 100. Now watch, when I move the stick, they both move, okay? So we want this to be opposite of that. So I'm actually gonna go minus 100, minus 100. So my apologies, I got that. You just have to, I don't actually know which direction they need to be. We may have to flip those, okay? Okay, so we have rudder and rudder and they're opposite, they're acting opposite of one another. Now when throttle cut, okay, let's walk out so we don't screw it up. I'm gonna go to monitor mode. So we have throttle, throttle goes up together and then there's a differential that may need to be opposite of one another, okay? The minus 100s for aux two or aux three might need to be plus 100 and then the throttle mix might need to be the opposite. But when you give throttle cut, boom, it drops them both like a rock. Drop them like a rock. No matter what condition you're in, you're not gonna chop your hands off. That's very critical. If you can't get that done, don't do differential thrust because you're likely to hurt yourself and it's actually one of those things that's easy to screw up, as you can see from my waffling in that radio setup. Okay, believe it or not, the radio setup is done. Now we just need to land according to this, and the camera crew is gonna give me an update on the battery. Your mic is on 
almost said and my camera is like 8%. 8 percent okay so do you want to try to land these wires quick so you're gonna have to stop me if it shuts off how about that okay so throttle this is our other throttle channel it's going to channel eight okay we know that because aux three is our other channel throttle cuts off and we can tell yep that's it then we have gear brown is down how do we know that because we know that by looking here it says minus plus s signal is the yellow color okay flaps six, six. okay brown is down guys we don't mean to rush this in any way we're just trying to get it all done for you okay then what else do we have then we have mode mode is our next one that's going to be on channel aux 2 yep so seven so seven okay so aux 2 channel seven Remember guys, this receiver is not currently spatially aware, so it's not gonna be making any decisions about any of this crap, positionally at least. Okay, then we have uh, elevator. Hold on, I wanna get the next one in line. Okay, this is rudder. Rudder's on channel two probably? No, nope, four. Four? Okay, yellow is up on rudder, good. Elevator, hold on, hold on, I wanna get the next one. This one is here, which is throttle. Throttle is number one for the main throttle, the primary throttle. Mm -hmm. And then elevator goes to channel two, correct? Channel three. Channel three, okay, so we'll go to channel three. I like to do them in order as they come out of the device because it's a little easier to keep them neat. Okay, so this is aileron, so it's on channel two. So now, if we were to start this thing, this thing would actually technically do all the stuff we want it to do. So before our battery dies, can I turn it on? Is that all right? Okay, yeah. we, we don't have the props on. We're gonna have to do some fiddling around still yet. Okay, so plugging that in. Now, we're gonna bind. So there's no prop on here. I'm gonna hit cancel. I'm gonna go down to bind. I'm gonna click bind. I'm gonna hit yes. As soon as I press this button, it's in bind mode. It's flashing. It's not spatially aware, so I can do this right like that. Okay, the flaps are safe. The gear haven't deployed yet. We've got a dance, that's from the reflex. Don't freak out, that's normal. Okay, good. Now, take off flaps. Okay, so we can set that real quick and get those so they're in a safe condition. We want the flaps to be stowed in the right per, per. Okay, so that needs to be a negative number because I'm in the normal flight mode. And as with typical FMS products, we probably need to go beyond minus 100. Okay, so there's our takeoff flap setting. Close to zero is probably good. And then our landing flap setting. Just gonna look under here, make sure we're not binding, and we're not, and we're at plus 100 there. Or excuse me, plus 100 compared to minus 100. Now the elevator correction should be the same. In fact, I want my takeoff flaps a little bit less than that. I wanna go to like, probably like 40. And you're like, that doesn't seem like much, Brian, because we're not all the way at the home position. So we'll go to servo setup and on flaps, not unlike other FMS models, we have to run this up to like 125-ish. And then that puts you nice and flush here, okay? So 125, then there's our takeoff flaps. Remember how I just backed that off and our full landing flaps, beautiful. Okay, so that's all set. Now the elevator needs to be corrected in the flap mode. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna just exaggerate the movement. We want this to go down. It's going down, good, okay? And then I'm gonna set that to, why don't we do, let's do six and 10. Woo. Now this has a big flap, okay? So it's an inboard and outboard flap. The ailerons, okay, so that's backward. So let's go to servo setup, travel, sub trim and then reverse ailerons roll left roll right elevator up elevator down yaw left okay we have to reverse the rudder yaw left yaw right R roll left roll right elevator up elevator down take off flaps landing flaps and then gear ready oops that was throttle cut gear oh sweet uh-oh why aren't you going Oh man, that is a slow gear operation. I had to cycle it once, guys. Oh, that is so sweet. Holy cow. Oh man, that is so gorgeous. 
I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so gear going back up, so we have it in the correct condition. Wow, even the doors and the frame inside of there, it's all painted that green color. So sweet. Okay, so we're putting that back on its feet. Whee! All right, so now, the moment of truth, this is probably wrong, so don't freak out. Throttle cuts off. First things first, I wanna tell what direction they're going. So I'm just gonna, this is going toward the inside. This one is also going toward the inside. They seem to start about the same. Now, don't worry guys, we don't know if this is correct yet, but I'm gonna give a little bit of throttle. That side went faster, which is wrong. That side went faster, which is wrong, okay? So real quick before we lose access to this camera crew, because we're gonna lose our battery here pretty quick. In mixing, throttle cuts on. This throttle to aux three, that part's fine. Rudder to throttle, this needs to go to minus 100 and this becomes minus 100 and then we're gonna just flip flop those two. And then that's gonna make our outputs the correct direction. Hopefully we don't lose our battery while I'm doing this because I wanna show you how it works. And then we can, okay, so this other rudder to aux three has to be with the switch off. So now this is gonna be plus 100 and plus 100. And then we're gonna go ahead and test. Remember, this is one of the few times you'll see Brian Phillips RC with props off because we wanna save our hands. Please be careful guys when you do things like this. If you follow the instructions halfway and you make a mistake, you can get hurt pretty bad. All right, throttle cut is currently off. I'm gonna give some throttle. I'm gonna yaw. Okay, good, going this way. This one's spinning faster. Spinning that way, that one's spinning. That's gonna yaw the plane. That's gonna yaw the plane. Throttle cuts on. Nothing. That's what we like to see, guys. Okay, there you have it. This plane's pretty much ready to start doing testing of modes, which is here, here. We got a slow flash. We've got flash flash. And we have solid. So now we just need to figure out from the reflex manual which one's which, or we can pick up the plane and check it out on our own. But we are literally like out of time and battery. And so guys, if you've endured this long video, we appreciate you very much. And honestly, this was a pretty to the point video, but this thing is amazing. I cannot wait to see it fly. These props are gonna be on here in mere moments, but I don't wanna do it in such a way that causes it to be dangerous before we're totally buttoned up on everything setting wise. And to be honest with you, the little bit of work left here, I'm not even sure if we're gonna wait because we have to charge stuff. So we're basically gonna stick this right here. We're gonna take this BEC and it's gonna go into the pocket underneath the wing joiner area so it can rest assured, okay? Because we don't want that to become damaged and we wanna have lots of air for it to breathe, okay? And then this thing, we're gonna take off our double-sided, or this is just Velcro. 5%, okay. Yeah, we're not gonna get a warning on the last little bit, okay? That battery is about where it needs to be, so I'm gonna just stick that down there. And then we need to get our antennas worked out. And that's gonna be super easy because this canopy gives us plenty of room mm -hmm. and it's gonna be pretty tight. We're gonna to have to put one vertical and one horizontal, okay? So I'll take a pin, push it in, and then this one will probably tape back here as well, okay? So it's all part of that package deal, okay? Now I hate to shortchange you guys because we're so dang close to the end, but you might be seeing this next in the air. So let's test AS3X and safe, even though it's not AS, AS3X and safe, it's actually auto leveling or not. Safe mode. safe mode, it should be auto leveling or we have to rotate that channel. Look at the elevator, it is not, okay. So I'm gonna lay this back down carefully. Now we need to rotate this direction right here, click. Servo setup, travel, sub trim reverse, aux two, mm -hmm. okay. So now we should have no stabilizer, off, listen, nothing. Stabilizer, look at the elevator. It's not trying to level it, so we're good. Safe mode, it's gonna try to level it. Look at the elevator, trying to level it. Look at the elevator, look at the ailerons. Trying to find the quickest route to level. Show them inside of the gear quick. 
absolutely fantastic beauty. Okay, guys. I would normally not be in such a rush at this time of the video, but I wanna be able to get myself ready to go for this flight. And so I'm gonna button up the loose ends. This little chunk of wiring doesn't even bother me. This is pretty much done, guys. It is done. I just gotta get the Atetis tape down and I won't bore you with that. And then to put your props on, because we have now throttle cut and tested, these things can be put on right here. They go back until they key right there. If this video ends, guys, if you wanna help support us, we have super thanks. All right, real quick, we're gonna finish this up. We checked CG, flip the plane upside down. It goes between this panel line, basically, and the edge of that plastic. It's gonna be a little awkward to check this one because it's so big, okay? I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet. But anyway, we put one prop on. We're gonna put the second one on. We also reduced our differential thrust ratio. It was 100 plus on the one mix and minus 100 on the other mix. And I realized that's way too much, okay? So before we energize this, let's show you how to do that. So these two mixes that I made, <clears throat> it was minus 100 and minus 100. Now it's minus 20 and minus 20. And then same thing here for rudder to aux three, but only when throttle cut is on or not on. Okay, plus 20 and plus 20. So that relationship will give you the positive and negative factor. So when you're at full throttle, you're not gonna have or realize any differential thrust at that rate. You'd have to increase that to like 50 or 80% or 90%. And then you'll see a tapering on one side opposite where you wanna yaw the aircraft. But we're not needing that much uh, rudder authority. Okay, so timer set up. So we're gonna click, scroll down to timer. We're just gonna set a timer for five minutes. Active, one out over 25%. <clears throat> at one minute, I want a verbal, I want a voice at 20 nothing, 10 seconds. Voice at expiration, I want tone and vibrate with the tone every minute thereafter. And then we wanna make sure we have our voltage telemetry, which we're not gonna have until we plug this in, okay? So we reduced that, mounted both props, uh, dealt with dual antennas, I used this, to poke into the foam, and we'll show you that in just a second. <clears throat> and now that we have, careful, mm -hmm. it's big. Now that we have this plane set up, it is awkward to pick this up with the guns on there. Kind of wish those guns were not a factor because they are sweet looking, but it's a little tempting to take them off. Okay, I glued this antenna in, and then I glued this pedo tube, oh, this, this pedo tube yep. in with China glue. Okay, and so then inside of here, you can see everything is laid out nicely. We've got the antennas stuck into the side. And all I did was I took this antenna, before I stuck it in, I pushed this into the foam, and then I pushed this one in vertical. So they're at 90 degrees of each other. So that takes care of that. CG mark, timer set up, voltage pack telemetry. We gotta do that next. This is the pack we're gonna fly with, 5006S50C. We're gonna slide it through the strap. Oh, I put two zip ties, one zip tie here and one zip tie there. Everything else is pretty much where it needed to be. Okay. <clears throat> I suspect you could probably put a bigger battery in this, but I don't know how it's gonna CG out. So I'm just going all the way forward for now, and then we'll test it in a second. Okay. High quality strap, and it's effective. That's what I want, okay? So then, Actually, I kind of need to get this down to the side. If your battery is too thick to fit in here, you can put it vertical. There's a little bit of head space there, okay? Okay, now, I need to make sure that my body is in a safe spot. My throttle cut is on and my throttle stick is down. Everything has been respected and tested. So that's the only reason we're doing this now, okay? I don't know how the heck I'm gonna do this. Can you come back here and do it no. from where I was standing? Okay, arms out. Pushing everything down. Wait for everything to initiate. Make sure that both ESCs beep. They did. Keep your hands inboard of the props. Put the canopy cover on. Make sure this latch latches. Don't get your face into the prop. While throttle cut is on, throttling yawing both directions, 
One last fight, flight control test, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and throttle cut off, giving just a little bit of throttle. We have forward thrust, we have differential thrust, and differential thrust. Very good, throttle cuts on, timer's cleared. That's good enough for me. The controls go up, they go down, they roll left, they roll right, they yaw left, they yaw right, the gear do the same, take off flaps, landing flaps. This thing is ready to fly, guys. Amazing, we just gotta check the CG, and I don't even know if the ordnance are gonna make it or not, because this thing is already awkward as heck to pick up. So let's try picking it up. I've tested my, my throttle cut now twice, okay? Because you gotta be in here. Feel like a plumber hugging the toilet. Back hole, she's nose heavy. Front position, she's tail heavy. It's pretty much good, nose forward. We're ready to rock and roll, guys. Support us, super thanks. YouTube memberships, Patreon memberships helps you get access to us for comments a little bit. And then also we have PayPal for one-time donations. Just remember, we're friends and family. And here on Brian Phillips RC, we bust our tails to bring you high quality content that's gonna get you in the air. So if you wanna get in the air with this plane, follow the links in the video description below. If you can't find the plane you're looking for, Brian Phillips RC by type and by brand manufacturer, hobby shop, distributor, etc. Okay, so either way you're looking for something, you can find it there. Or on YouTube, you can search by playlist is the best way to do it. Click on my face, it's a little round icon, look like a kid, click on that. You can search there, just our channel. It's a good way to find stuff. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. If you haven't seen the flights, they're published now. Check it out. Thanks for watching.